Good morning. Happy Sunday. It is Sunday, July 25th. It's a balmy 85 degrees. I am Bailey Race. This is Anthony Krizowitz. That is Luke Priest. And you have tuned in to the terrifically hosted and terrifyingly named X Gets the Square, a pop culture podcast where we talk about anything and everything under the sun pop culture, anything else that pops into our head that's not Food Fighters. <laughs> Did you write Lovely. that down? That no, great. it was all improv. Oh, well, that that that's 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 great. I, I give you kudos on, on that one. Um, I would say next time, slow it down a little bit, be a little more professional. That was kind of shitty on its own end. But anyway, that in the own. No, I'm just joking. Uh, it's great we to all see. Can't be Anthony Cape Cod Quasa Quasa. So. That's that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, Luke, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, Bailey has spoken extremely highly of you. Um, but previous to uh, knowing who you were, I didn't know who you were, so I did some background and. Uh, you seem to be extremely legit, or as they would say, too legit to quit. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for thanks for inviting me on. Yeah, and you're coming from where? I'm from uh, the United Kingdom uh, in England, so in the West Midlands, in one of the shires. So I'm in Worcestershire. All right, let me ask you one question before we get into pop culture. Are you a soccer fan? Football fan. F- football fan. I apologize. I don't want to insult you. <laughs> That's fine. You American. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I'm still trying to figure things out. So, I, who wouldn't, do you- I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm a, a huge football fan, um, but technically, I'm an Aston Villa supporter. Gotcha. 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 Okay. I, I just, just. And I, I watched the World Cup recently as well, <clears throat> which was which was pretty exciting. That was a uh, that was that was intense. We got to watch it over here as well. Um, my son's big in soccer. No, I'm a. Uh, I got. I got pushed into the Tottenham world. Um, okay. So I just didn't. You know, I'm still trying to find someone who actually enjoys the team. As, um, but I don't seem to find anybody. But no, I. I don't really follow the league that much. If I'm honest, mm. uh, I'll always watch like the England games if they play. Obviously, the Euros and the World Cup and stuff. But I used to go to the, the Aston Villa games a lot in the '80s when I was a kid and stuff with my parents. Uh, but yeah. Life took over, essentially. <laughs> Damn life. Now, <clears throat> so, let, me, yeah. let me ask you this. You know, with everything happening in the world right now, um, COVID-related, I am curious um, how things are going for you over to the United Kingdom. Because for us over here, it is very strange. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit about going to my first concert in, in on Friday. But um, I'm just curious how things are going in your neck of the woods in retrospect to everywhere else in the world. Um. Well, like they've kind of opened everything back up again now, but COVID is obviously still a thing, and it's you know there's, there's still like high case numbers, but the deaths are like way down. Um, obviously, people are still dying, and it's terrible that that's happening. Um, but I think with the vaccine that's been rolled out, I think now we're kind of in a better place. I guess I think. I mean, I'm no expert, obviously. So sure. Uh, but for me personally, I just like now I just work from home all the time so uh, okay. i haven't been i haven't been to a gig like since covid was a thing obviously so it's kind of exciting that gigs are coming back as well yeah, yeah and that's that's kind of where i was hoping to start off tonight because i know with gigs coming back or this morning i keep saying tonight i'm so used to damn shows at nighttime but with, mm. uh, this morning i know bailey you've been to a couple of shows already um you've been out and yeah i've been en- enjoy that. going to concerts since october just because mount joy has been doing drive-in tours so i pretty much like i haven't been really working uh like i have been working this year most of 2020 i wasn't really working but i was going to a lot of concerts just being that mount joy was like coming up with ways to create safe you know right. covid free spaces to be able to enjoy live music still so we did three sold out drive-in tours throughout the the course of covid now, okay. but you just recently went and saw them with a whole crowd and being a part of that, correct? Yeah, yeah, Red Rocks. What was that like yeah, the first? Sold out Red Rocks crowd. So you went to Red Rocks, and what was that like for the first time? I cried multiple times. Um, it felt like things were actually back to normal, and you could feel that there was a certain connection and community between everyone that was definitely missed. You know, over the course of the <clears throat> the year and a half, that there wasn't that. So it was definitely it was definitely an experience that I heavily heavily missed. That was super stoked that it was back. Yeah, Luke, I'm miss, missing shows definitely. Luke, previous to COVID, how many shows a year did you typically go to? Uh, not as many as I'd like to. 
Uh, but uh, I don't know, maybe bigger shows, like maybe sort of four or five a year, I would say, which is not a lot. But I mean, I used to go to like shows like every month, you know, I'd be going sure. to free gigs. Um, but, you know, again, life, I have kids and whatnot. So it's harder <laughs> for me to and work and just, yeah. But um, I've actually booked myself in to go to a show uh, sort of early next year. So Ooh. I'm quite excited about that already. And who's Who that? To catch? Uh, so it's Gojira and uh, a, a band called Employed to Serve are supporting them. So that's in London. So yeah, I'm excited to go to that. So going to that with a couple of friends. So it should be good. That's pretty, that's, that's pretty, it's, you know, it's exciting in general. Like I think pop culture, and I was thinking about this last night when I was thinking about today's like how pop culture in general, like when it comes to either movies or music or um, just like anything in general, like when the reason I think as uh, someone who takes it all in that really loves it, it's just the fact that we can forget things for a while, yeah. right? Like it's like that, san- like they, our sanity can be brought together. Um, mm-hmm. Friday night, I was invited to go to a concert to a band I never heard of. Um, that, and, I was, and it was the first time I've never did that. I was like, you know what? I'm I'm down. I'm like, I'm. This is exciting. Yeah. Um, who are you going to see? Well, I'll explain in a minute because I'm pretty sure you know who this okay. band is. So, because they've opened up for Mount Joy before. Um, hmm. Okay. So I go. I get invited out to this show, and I didn't listen to the music previously. Like, I just want to go in blind. I've never done this before. I just want to enjoy it. And so, you know, first of all, I, it was the first time in a long time I felt like the old guy. Like, I definitely was the old guy at this concert because this concert was mostly <laughs> kids in their early 20s. Um, some girl um, after the yeah, second. Fuck those 20 year olds. Oh, yeah, damn. That's every gig you go to, though, right? No, because yeah. most of the shows, like, no, like, you know, <laughs> like in 95% of what I see is going to be Pearl Jam. Like, I go Pearl Jam yeah. or in that in general. So everyone's typically, I'm, I'm usually the youngest person there because I'm 36 and most of the people are in 40s, 50s seeing Pearl Jam. So I'm definitely the youngest person. So it was awkward going to a show where some girl comes up to me and my buddy Paul and says, hey, um, a guy I met on Tinder um, is here and he's bothering me. Do you mind if I, uh, if I hang out by you? I'm like, yeah. And the first, the first thing I said as an old guy, I'm like, listen, I have a daughter. I understand you can hang out by me. And I'm like, I just stopped myself. I'm like, what the fuck am I saying? Like I have a yeah. daughter. Like I was like, God, I just, I like, I told my friend, I'm like, my back's hurting. It was just weird. But, um, but so the first two bands are all right. I, they were local bands and I, I couldn't get into them. The guy, the second band, the guy had like a mullet and looked kind of like trying, trying too hard to look like David Bowie. And I couldn't, didn't have a voice that carried at all. So the, th- the last band goes on and this place goes from like, not anybody there to pack sold out. And we're in the front. I'm like, what the, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, Paul, who the hell are these people? And he's like, dude, they just signed to a big label. They're playing a couple local shows. They're from Virginia, um, but they're getting big. So the band's called Illiterate Light. Um, have they you heard have of it? They have not opened for Mount Joy before, but they've opened for a band that we have opened for before. So you're like two degrees off. Oh, I would, they said they opened up for Mount Joy on the stage. Huh. Anyway. It might have been a one-off show. In I don't Rich- remember them being on tour with us at any point. Okay. Anyway, that's what they said. They said in Richmond, yeah. Virginia, we opened, they had a story about opening for Mount Joy. Anyway. Mm-hmm. So this band comes on stage and it's two people, just a, sta- a drummer and a guitar player. And I, all I remember was uh, the first song goes off and there is six people crowd surfing. And I was like, I was just, I was lost. I was like, what the fuck is going? And it was just like this. And then the guy, the drummer in the middle of the song goes, we're getting back to normal. And then next thing you know, it is a whole sea of people crowd surfing no to this, this music. And it was just like, I felt like I was brought, I felt I have like get back to my youth. Cause I hadn't seen this since the nineties. And it was just like all these young kids having fun. And I'm off on the wall, kind of in the front. And there's a picture they posted yesterday uh, from the show. And you can see me like just over like look, not even looking at the band, but looking at this crowd of kids just crowd surfing and smiling. And it was just like the first time like I was like, holy shit, I think we are getting back to normal. Yeah, it's cool. It's a wonderful feeling. It is. And I would recommend like I don't really like new music. I have to barely knows us, but I would highly (laughs) recommend I, 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 I just bought three more tickets to see them. Um, in August, are doing three nights in in Harrisonburg, about an hour and a half away from here. But like, this is probably one of the best live shows for a new band that I've seen since I don't know, in probably twenty years. Illiterate Light's really good. They have a lot of energy. Yeah. Okay. I have to check them out. What are they called again? Sorry. Illiterate Light. 
Okay. Light that cannot read. Mm. Don't you uh-huh. hate that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Luke, what have you been listening to lately? What is getting you motivated? Um, what am I listening to? That's Because uh, I listen to so much stuff. I mean, when I'm working, I tend to listen to a lot of podcasts, if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. Um, which te- What's your favorite that's podcast? Not, that's probably like, uh, I listen to um, the Adam Buxton podcast. I don't know if you've listened to that before. He's a British comedian. Um, listen to him. I listen to a podcast called The Downbeat, um, which is pretty good. Uh, what else do I listen to? Music wise, I listen to like anything from like, I don't know, the Cinematic Orchestra, uh, This Will Destroy You uh slayer you know it's like anything like and everything really listen to uh but listen to a lot of like going back through loads of old records um like jurassic five mm, um yeah uh yeah just a mixture of stuff really yeah uh, so you listen called, to a lot of heavier stuff when you work then i do listen to heavy stuff but sometimes when i'm really kind of getting into my work i'll i'll listen to a lot of like uh like 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 a band like this will destroy you because I kind of like yeah. that sort of the no vocals thing and it's just very atmospheric and yeah uh, yeah that sort of stuff I yeah guess. I'm really into heavy like no vocal atmospheric stuff too the other day I listened to the Interstellar soundtrack while I was working okay so I'm that, not, that stuff I know the soundtrack you mean yeah heavy metal yeah yeah, yeah oh, okay yeah. I'll have to check that out spaceship was probably really heavy it was yeah. metal. But, I'm just looking at um, my Spotify now just to sort of remind myself what I've been listening to. What you listen to. You, you know, I think we get into this this habit of pressing shuffle and we just like just have it as background noise so much that it's like Yeah. That's I think that's another reason why I don't listen because I don't listen to the radio. I don't listen to like I just listen to what I what I know, what I've known for so long, and it's just I make my own playlist. I press shuffle on that, and, and then if one of those bands happen to put out something new, then I'll add it mm-hmm. to that playlist. But that's why I'm so, you know, it's so custom because you know you're not being forced or told what to listen to unless someone tells you, "Hey, listen to this band or artist." Yeah. And but it is uh-huh. interesting in its own sense that like how different music is absorbed now than it was when you know we were younger. I mean. Mm-hmm. Bailey, when you were younger, not to get on the age thing, but like honestly, like you were in the midst of when digital music was really peaking. Because, I mean, you had MP3. I, I mean, you. I didn't listen to digital music until I was in high school. I had a, a portable CD player that I carried around with me that I nine times out of ten listened to the original Pokemon movie soundtrack. <laughs> um, so like Pokemon movie <laughs> one with uh, Lugia and everything. Um, I listened to that soundtrack a lot. I, I distinctly I have a very vivid memory of walking into Walmart and using my chore money to buy that CD player and the Pokemon soundtrack and popping that bad boy into it the second that we got into our minivan in the Walmart parking lot to drive home. I got lost in it, you know. That's atmospheric. If you want to talk about atmospheric music, the Pokemon One soundtrack. Okay. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Now I, I do have a question for you two, though. How many songs do you guys have in your Spotify? I'm just looking at it now. When did so tell you? I don't have Spotify. I use Apple. Okay. Um, just for the fact, that I, I'm just I, I'm so. Um, I've been so involved in the Apple atmosphere or I guess you, or the, you know, the web that they've put you in that it's hard for me to get out of, which is not a bad thing. Um, but my playlist that I add things to right now has, uh, 398 songs, 27 hours with the music. Okay. What, what about your total phone? Like how many songs do you have in your Apple music? Oh, 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 oh gotcha. I looked last night on mine. So that's the only reason why I'm curious. Oh, uh, 7,411. Word. Luke, what about you? 9,214. Oh, wow. I'm the top person out of all three of us. I really? 12,867. <laughs> but, nice. here's the, but here's the real question. Out of all 12,000 songs, how many did you actually listen to? Well, this is, oh, most this is of a... them. I, I always just hit shuffle play. I, mm. I only make playlists for other people. I don't really have playlists for myself. I make one playlist a year and then I just add to that from the shuffle play and then only play that playlist five or six times. Yeah. I hear you on that one. That's why like that one playlist has 368 songs. I'll add songs to it. But then after a while, I'll be like, I don't want to hear that song shuffled. So I'll delete it from it. 
Okay. Mm. You know, so like if you aggravate me enough, then I remove you from the list before you have to. Maybe later on, I'll add you back. But you know what I have been listening to recently that is kind of that falls in that whole like atmospheric um, thing because the only concert I've ever been to that like I felt like everyone was trance, didn't move, was looking. Cigaros is probably the greatest get lost in their music because you have no idea what the hell they're saying. Um, mm. And that I think that is the greatest atmospheric music because you can just get lost in this whole in your own head based off of like what the hell is going on. Is that the band that spelled Sugar Ross? That's how you pronounce it? Sigur Ross? Sigur Ross, yeah. I I would say Sigur Ross. Sigur Ross? But you also have a better accent than me, so you can get away with like saying anything you want and make it sound cool. I don't, I can barely speak English, so I'm probably saying it wrong. You can do an English accent when you say it though. Don't inhibit yourself. No, I am not. I will not embarrass myself and um, embarrass the, the, my, our English speaking friends by me trying to, because every accent I do, I can start it and then it goes right into a Borat accent. I can't do anything. Is, Is Luke frozen for you? Oh, he is. I thought he was just like ignoring us for a second, but he is frozen. We'll Luke, see if he... are you talking and we can't hear you? He's still on. Give him a minute. Maybe his internet's catching up. Gotcha. But yeah, but Sigaros is definitely to me. I don't know. It's just have you ever heard of them before? Of yes. Listen to them now. Yeah, he just oh. dropped. Uh oh. Oh no! This is nine o'clock Uh-oh, in the morning. Let's go I to... told you that I it was a the the pausing was a bad omen. <laughs> let's 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 do this. Hold on, he, he'll he'll come back at some point. Let's just go like that for a second until he gets back. Um, um, yeah, no. What about my morning jacket? What about my morning jacket? Jim James's voice. <laughs> Jim James's voice is well. First of all, I think I, you know we were talking about this the other day. I believe that. A My Morning Jacket is probably, if they would have came out in the mid-90s, they'd probably be one of the biggest bands now. Unfortunately, with them coming out at the time they did with their, um, with their, you know, with digital being at the height, you know, coming out in the height and and not that physical copy, because they're definitely a physical band, album band. Yeah, I think that hurt them just a tad. Um no, I, I my morning jackets is one of my top five favorite bands. Of, like that, I'm I'm going to see them in August. Um, I can't wait to see mm. them. But no, I love my morning jacket. I think they're just he has a way of uh, of carrying a voice for a man of his size and his demeanor that I, it's just magical that he can come out like that. Mm-hmm. For Yumi Ames, Jim James is amazing. Yumi Ames, yeah. I don't know what's going on. I do not know what's going on with Luke. Luke, we're we're still here for you, buddy. I don't know if you're listening to us right now, but uh, wake up. Up, he's messaging. Let's see. My oh, internet just my internet went, just went, went weird. weird. You have to no. You have to read that in a British accent so that way you know it came from Luke. My my, internet, in, just my internet just went weird. I know you. You know what? You're right. You don't want to do the English accent <laughs> because you're going to embarrass yourself. I go back on what I was saying. I'll jump. <laughs> I'll jump back on shortly. Uh, Sorry. I'll oh. jump back on shortly. <laughs> you sound like you're like a maniacal evil genius in some nineteen sixties. <laughs> I'll jump back on shortly. <laughs> I will take Mr. the ransom. I will take the ransom money in pennies and nickels only. He puts the lotion on his skin. You know, here I got you know you, with you doing that funny impression. So I finally watched he, the was the Silence of the Lambs about a month ago because I never watched mm. it. Not that I had nothing to get. I just and I love horror movies. I just never got a chance to watch yeah. it. I did not like that movie. One, I thought the movie was terrible. You got to watch Hannibal. Hannibal, in my opinion, is better than the original movie, the TV show that's based on it. That's a very unpopular opinion, actually. I hope that people don't string me up after they hear this and hear me say that. But it's uh, Hannibal's really good. It stars Mads Mikkelsen. He plays Hannibal Lecter, mm-hmm. and he does a phenomenal Hannibal Lecter. Interesting. Yeah. No. I. You know. Which, well, I mean, speaking of. Sorry, what were you going to say? No, go ahead. I was just going to say, speaking of Mads Mikkelsen, I recently watched the movie that he stars in opposite of Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley, and it was not good. It was not good at all. I have watched a couple of movies that have been really good, and then there's one that I watched, and I liked it when I saw it, and now that I think back to it, I don't know if I liked it anymore. What was it? Black Widow. 
Oh, yeah, I've watched it three times and I can't decide if I like it or not. Yeah, it's weird. I just think I think if it came out after Civil War and was and it was yes. properly placed, I think I would enjoy it. But now that it's like, you know, made later on, I felt I felt like they almost made Black Widow almost they they kind of jokingly joked at her a little bit. The sister yeah. talking about like the hair flip, and now I can't watch a movie and not notice the hair flip more. And like, well, you know, the whole thing with her posing after she falls, and she's like, "You're such a poser." It's oh, so yeah. overdone. And yeah. then she finally does. She does the pose, and she's like, "Ugh, I feel disgusting." Yeah, I love that. The Florence Pugh, in my opinion, was probably one of the highlights of that movie. Like hands yeah. down, Florence Pugh and David Harbour kind of stole the show in that movie. Yeah, I, did, I just I just think it didn't do justice to Scarlett Johansson and the black widow character. Um, mm-hmm. and it just, you know, and then it's like, now we know what Hawkeye movie is going to be. The Hawkeye shows going to be, it's basically this chick going after Hawkeye. Um, yeah, but it does star rock star, Jeremy Renner. So yeah, he can't sing. Although the problem is don't look at Jerry, Men- Jeremy Renner's press photos for all of his music stuff, because he wears a, a cutoff leather, uh, vest and now anytime that I see Hawkeye on the screen wearing his utility vest that he pulls the arrows from, all I can see is Jeremy Renner in a cut off leather vest and his aviators. Uh, yeah, no, not for me. But no, I saw that and then Friday I went to the movies and I saw um the escape room too. Um I never saw any, the original one, so So I here, I like cheesy horror movies. Or like Okay. I really do because it's just it, they're like they're really terrible and the acting's terrible, but it's just fun. Mm-hmm. And the first one was fun. The second one was pretty fun too. But it's just like I, it's almost like um, paranormal, paranormal activity. Like I love the first one. Second one came out, I sort mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Then it was just like, all right, they're gonna milk the shit of this until someone says how like they can't go anymore. Oh yeah, the first one was the only good paranormal activity. I I will die on that hill. Oh, I I, I love the first one, but I love the I love the one where it had the uh, Spanish speaking boy in it. I don't know. That was like the one that was like it didn't do had to do with the original story per se, but then at the end ties in the story. Did uh, you see that one? Uh, is that the movie where they heard noises and then they were standing in the living room and all of a sudden they just showed a whisper and it was like Donde está los biblioteca? And then books <laughs> just started flying off the walls and on to, into the middle of the room. I don't remember them asking where the library was, but um, I neither do I. That's the only Spanish sentence and phrase that I know. <laughs> oh, he's messaging us again. I'm having. He said to I'm co- having to completely restart everything. This never happens. I'm having to. It's so rec- funny that he said this never happens. A week ago, he messaged me and said that he's not like other guys. So he's really just hitting all of those, uh, all of those kind of quintessential little messages. I am having to completely restart everything. That, this what is never that, happens. Typically, I'm having to completely restart everything. I swear, this <laughs> never happens. <laughs> oh God. Oh fuck me. Anyway, yeah, um, no, I um. I was, I'm not, so, okay, I haven't been super duper into horror movies lately, but I have been, like, really, for whatever reason, deep diving into horror video games. Um, Well, don't talk about, don't talk, don't talk about video games yet, because Luke's going to have a lot more insight on that thing. I know, I know, I'll dive further into it. I'll dive further into the ones that I've been playing when Luke is here, because Luke is actually going to know what I'm talking about since they're newer video games, and he works in video games. But, um... I remember, I don't know if it was the first or second episode of this, but I, I remember distinctly saying I will not play horror video games because it was too immersive for me. But for whatever reason, now I've just loved to suffer for this last like month and just like put myself through absolute fucking hell with these video games. Um, one of which like was probably one of the best stories that I've ever played through. Um, even though I was reading through all of the reviews for the game after I finished it and everyone was like, oh, the story was so contrived and the story was so predictable. And I was just like, yeah, it was predictable, but it was still enjoyable. But, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn that story down just because you can kind of tell what was going to happen in the end. Yeah. You know, growing up, most of the games that I played were in the beginning were horror based silent hit. Like the ones when, when, when PlayStation really started having those first person, mm-hmm. um, like horror based games, I got really into them. like the resident evil, the silent Hills, um, like I, I, I dug, that was like the first games that weren't like fighter games that like had storylines that you had to follow through. Even when Dreamcast came out and I was a huge Dreamcast fan and you had like Blue Stinger and even like the Resident Evil series on that, um, you know, like that stuff was great. Cause I like the idea of like being in a world that, you know, will never exist and like having that fear 
you know, like I like playing in the dark and like having those jump moments because I felt like then that the game was actually selling you on something um, that, you know, that like, I don't know, it just it made it for me feel real more uh, feel real more feel more real. Um, it, I, I'm told you. I woke up at I woke up at eight <laughs> fucking twenty two to do this. Anthony, it's earlier here than it is for you. You're talking like you just woke up earlier yeah. than me. Yeah. I've been up since six thirty a.m. here. Yeah, well, see, you you had more time to adjust. I did not. <laughs> yeah, but I had less sleep. I worked until three last night. Well, good, good, good because for you. Mine- I watched the Woodstock oh. nine. I watched the Woodstock ninety nine documentary. The Woodstock ninety nine documentary. I watched that yesterday. Oh, it was we, so good. You know, it's interesting about. I, so, how old were you in ninety nine? Two. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So you don't remember it all. No. You know, I well, I, I don't know. So when Woodstock ninety nine, I remember. So I remember watching Woodstock ninety four on TV. Like it was a pay per view okay. back then. I remember watching nine inch like nine inch nails. That performance, I can remember it vividly to this day like every yeah, was an accident so in 94 i wasn't even being thought of so no i got gotcha. you at 94 no no, yeah. no that, that that no I, I i understand but when 99 came around so you're talking about i am how old was i 99 14 right something like that 15 whatever it was yeah and whatever a young but, lad yeah so but i remember um uh, myself my friend Catherine, my mm. friend uh karan and my friend javier all in, in the city we were living in quorum new york like this was a huge deal like because the lineup had like i remember like like everyone was like like they were big rap uh, some of them were rap fans so they were excited about dmx being on the stage and then like i was excited about like you know because i was all in, into like you know like corn and limp biscuit like that was like you know there was a lot of like hype around that and that was what was being sold mm-hmm. to our generation at that time like as what to listen to because that was what mtv was playing right like because there mm-hmm. was that it was right before the shift of like you know of of rock and roll music to that you know the pop music which they talk extensively in the documentary but mm-hmm. like i remember watching that in Woodstock, the first day, I don't remember, like, it wasn't, like, anything crazy, but, like, that second day, like, Saturday, you can tell, like, it was awkward to watch, because it was, like, it was just music and boobs on TV consistently, and I remember yeah. when they showed Jamiroquat, um at that one point, like, arguing with the camera guy, there's, I wish it would show the whole scene, because I remember it, like, the, the, the during um his popular song, which I don't really remember, because I'm not a big Jamiroquat fan, but like all it was during that song was just like it was just a sea of women and like a different camera angles of women's breast and it was like it was nuts dude and i remember like there was a point where this the, the camera jerks and shamarquat like hey i think you've i think you've seen your fair share of tits like look at look at it look at the band and mm-hmm. it was it got it got really weird and i remember like do that limp biscuit thing or even like the red hot chili peppers like i remember just watching With that the crowd and stuff like that Oh yeah, man! Like it was, nu- it was crazy, and I remember the feed during Red Hot Chili Peppers kept going in and out. Like it just was never stable. Like especially halfway through, yeah. um, you know, it, it was crazy. But that documentary really opened your eyes to like, you know, the beginning really of social media and like how how social media is justified today of like how these people like, you know, where their anger is coming from per se, and how like you know music. It, it was just ninety nine was a very weird year for music in general and and time in general and like this all up this this anked up um anxiety and anger that everyone had and how they were letting it out and this kind of being sold of like how double zeros is going to kill the computers and mm-hmm. it was just a really weird time but man that documentary was it was really weird to watch um and go back and watch it and 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 go back to like me watching it at home in 99 mm-hmm. and like, it was just it was a it was an absolute crazy time I think one of the biggest things that we can take away from that documentary is the fact that Moby is a prophet um, being that he said that within 10 minutes of him being on site, he could tell that something was wrong. And if everybody listened to Moby when he said that, then, you know, maybe, maybe it wouldn't have been such a bad experience. Maybe, you know, he could have stepped on stage and done his Moby thing and said, everybody don't do what you're about to do. I have neck tattoos. Listen to me. And <laughs> he then have... he went and played the, the 24-hour rave stage. He did not have neck tattoos back then. But it's like, well, even like, know. even like if you watch, like, I don't remember Alanis Morissette or Jules' performance um, back then because they were in the, in the afternoon. 
Um, like most of the shows I watch were like the later, like the ones like started at five o'clock. I remember the pay-per-view, mm-hmm. but like even watching Alanis Morissette and Jewel perform who were absolute amazing musicians. Well, like, you saw that thing where they were like, there's an estrogen quota because they made the only three women, women performers there, like only one a day. Also, we're probably, we have to go over an hour or something. So that way we can get Luke his, his screen and audio yep. time. Here he comes. I think he's coming on. Hold on. Whenever he comes back in. There he is. Got him. We got to catch him up to speed. Hey, Luke, we were talking about Alanis Morissette and Red Hot Chili Peppers. What's that? Sorry. We were talking about Alanis Morissette, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Moby being a prophet with neck tattoos and fires while you were gone. Love it. Just to catch Alanis, up to speed. Alanis Morissette, I saw her live. I remember seeing her live at a festival. She was yeah. amazing. She is. She's is, she is she is a very underrated because everyone knows her for her one those couple hits, but no, she was a you know, she was really good. You know, Luke, I don't know how old you are, but I'm assuming with two kids, you're probably the same age range I'm in. But do you remember Woodstock ninety nine? I do, yeah. I'm forty one, by the way. Anyway. Oh, oh, how is it the you people that are old? Forty one. Son of a Get bitch. Out of town. I was born in nineteen eighty. Wow. I mean this in the nicest way possible. You look fantastic for your age, Luke Crease. <laughs> Thanks, I will, man. I will have that on record. Thanks. Thanks. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I hate this. Like, I, I just, I don't understand. Maybe I need like, do you put lotion? Like what, what's your secret? Cause I need this fucking formula. Like I'm yeah, third. puts lotion on the skin, Anthony. It's yeah. It's just, uh, what is it? I don't know. What I don't know. We all look quite young in my family, if I'm honest. Although mm. I am, I have, you know, if you see me up close, I don't, I don't look that young. I've well, got sure. wrinkles and weird hairs and all sorts of places. Well, let me say, at least once a show, I do this to mess with Anthony. Luke, your hair looks fantastic. Um, let me just say, <laughs> so you can see the, vis- the visible anger on the this, this, this is this is this is a wig, actually. Oh, okay, all right, good. Oh, it's, oh, not, it's not real. You, should, you guys should exchange notes, it's just uh, because I'm sure Anthony on. might be interested to hear where you got that. So, <laughs> well, I can't wait to the day because you wear hats just as much as I did when you were younger. You're, how old are you now, Bailey? 20, 20 I'm baby? 20, I'm 24. 24. <laughs> Wait till you hit 29, and I'm going to laugh at your ass as that shit starts falling out. My plan is to just stop existing at 25. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just okay. going to one day just wake up and just, you know, like in Endgame. I mean, not Endgame, in Infinity War with the snap. One day mm. I'm just going to dust, and that's it. That's the whole kit and caboodle of my plan as to what to do when I turn 25. <laughs> so... Now, Luke, before, uh, as you were gone, we did talk about some random stuff, but one thing that we did talk about was, um, you know, video games a little bit. Um, I'm not in them as much now as I was in the, when I, back when I was younger. Um, mm-hmm. I was, and, you know, Bailey was talking about the fact that he's kind of getting immersed in some horror-based games nowadays. Like, when I was younger, horror-based games were kind of like my, like, that's what I enjoyed. Like, the Resident Evils, your Silent Hills, um, you like a Blue Stinger when Dreamcast came out. Like the, I love those games because I love like the scare factor of it and that first person like ability of of you know finding things and that mystery behind it. Um, yeah. So from what Bailey tells me, is that you are immersed pretty heavily in video games. Uh, I mean, I work on uh, a lot of video game related things. I don't play video games as much as I'd like to, uh, but I do love video games. Yeah. Uh, you you're one of the key artists for Strange Brigade, right? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, I did some work on Strange Brigade. Yeah, I did. Uh, what did I do on Strange Brigade? I did all the branding, and I did the uh, I did the collector's edition box set for that game. Uh, and yeah, I remember seeing that, that uh, when you posted all of that. And yeah, I, it's saw... funny whenever I'm scrolling through Xbox on the little um, on the store, and I see that come up, I'm like, oh, cool, and then I keep scrolling. But it is kind of a two second kind of oh, cool moment. Yeah, I, I, I have gotten alternate into artwork. Yet. What's that? Sorry, mm-hmm. I was you just haven't... saying I haven't gotten into playing Strange Brigade yet. Ah, okay. So wait, yeah. is it, this kind of looks like almost like a National Treasure meets Resident Evil kind of game. Yeah, it's kind of uh, they're essentially like these sort of four. Um, what would you call them? Kind of archaeologists, I guess. Okay. They're they're four Laura Crofts. Yeah, they're yeah they're, yeah. Uh, and they all have like special abilities and stuff. Oh, yeah. um, it's cool. Didn't they're from the? It's from the same people that made all of the Sniper Elite games, right? Yeah, Rebellion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I worked. I worked with Rebellion for years. I mm. I, I started working at Rebellion in. I actually worked for Rebellion 
for like uh, oh really yeah so back, back in you were doing freelance yeah so back back in 2004 i worked for 2080 comics and i worked there for and that's owned by rebellion mm -hmm. uh, so all the games were being made there and the comic was there as well so they had like this sort of publishing section uh so i was I seven there. years old when you were doing that that is madness i was like <laughs> 24 years old when i got that yeah. job but yeah That's and right. then and then i moved into the game side and then now i kind of like work part-time for them uh and freelance essentially mm -hmm. this game actually so really intrigued i'm buying it on amazon as we speak i'm buying the ultimate the stargate collector's edition for xbox one as we speak that's the one that you did all the art for right the collector's edition yeah i've got it it's literally behind me down there you can see it on the floor can you see because i'm sort of most this is my new studio it's like there's boxes and crap everywhere it looks good yeah that's i was telling anthony that i strategically placed my chair because i'm in my studio right now and i don't want anyone to see how dirty it is behind my chair oh yeah so. this just box this box is everywhere in here at the moment um yeah so uh yeah i've done a bunch of stuff for rebellion um strange brigade was i did like the alternative artwork i guess it comes with the special mm -hmm. edition there's like the regular key art but i did uh all the stuff that goes in the box art yeah for that so it was like the steel book case and the actual outer box and um there's a few other things as well in there well i right. just and then anthony just this might it. be a little this might be a little bit more up your alley, Anthony, considering just sure. like the culture that you immerse yourself in when you were younger. Um, Luke, you've also done a lot of stuff with Santa Cruz, right? As you're wearing your Santa Cruz t-shirt, even a lot yeah, of love... uh, skate decks and t-shirt designs with them. Yeah, yeah, I've done some stuff for Santa Cruz, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're ace people to work with. Um, yeah. That was one of those sort of things where I uh, I met them. At, I went to New York Comic Con the one year with a gallery I did work for. And they just happened to be there doing the, you know, the garbage pile kids um, mm -hmm. decks they were doing. They had like a stand for that at the time. It was you really did cool. The, yeah. Wait, you did garbage pile kids? No, no, I didn't do garbage pile kids. Oh. Santa, Cru Santa Cruz had a garbage pile kids crossover stand thing. They were like promoting it with tops. And, yeah, a lot um, of the stuff that you've done for Santa Cruz was like Mars Attacks, right? Like a lot yeah. of that stuff in that vein. That. Yeah, that's yeah, one of the, the deck right there in his wall. I didn't, I didn't design that particular board there. That's just one that they sent to me to say thanks for being part of the thing. Um, yeah, right. they came in these blind bags, so you'd open, you wouldn't know what board you were going to get. You'd open the the pack, and then you'd be like, I think there were like ten different designs to choose from, and then one of them would be done by an artist. And I think there were like, I don't know, twenty or thirty artists that did these bespoke boards. And uh, I got to do two. So, yeah, it's quite cool. That was a good thing. Yeah. And, then, yeah, and then I've done some apparel for them as well. I said, yeah, uh, yeah, this T-shirt I'm wearing now. And, you uh, you yeah. actually designed Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz T-shirts? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, God, that does bring it. I remember wearing a Santa Cruz T-shirt with my Jenko pants back in 98. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. It's one of those i love working on cool brands and i love working on cool brands that i just loved as a kid and santa cruz was one of, was one of those brands were you a um, were you a jenko kid as well no do you do you not remember jenko's no oh my remind God. me remind me of jenko's jenko's so jenko j-n-c-o was this brand that came out in probably like 96 and it was originally just like a regular jean company. And then what they did was they started taking like these massive patches of like uh, like a bunny skateboarding and stuff or elephants and, and patching them on the jeans. But then what they were known for was what they were called elephant pants. So basically they were as big wide all the way down to cover your foot. So you look like you're wearing these massive uh, – I'm going to see if I can pull up a picture real quick so I can put it up on the screen. But these massive just ridiculous oversized pants – that I look back at and I'm like, what the hell was I thinking? Here we go. Let me see if I can. Um... The guitarist from Limp Bizkit wore them. Yeah, I was just about to say this definitely sounds like people who listen to Corn wore these trousers. Oh yeah. man, absolutely insane. Corn and Spanish. They were a, they were a whole thing. My I was obviously being born in '97. I kind of missed all of that fad by the time that I could choose what to wear. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember my dad distinctly telling me that when he was in college, he wore patchwork bell bottoms 
uh, which is not the same thing as Jenko's, but I know that they are still within the same fad of jeans that do not fit, but still fit. And you could fit an entire other pair of legs inside of them. Yeah. Pull- amazing. As Anthony's talking about. Yeah. I am trying to pull up an image right now. Hold on one second. Give me, give me un moment. That's what we call having the crossover of comfort and function being together with, uh, with those elephant Jenko pants or bell bottoms. At least the ones that were like, these are the ones that would drag on the floor oh, and yeah. they would become like really filthy and dirty at the bottom. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's how you know that they're well-loved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vintage. Yeah, 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 that's what we call being well-loved. But Luke, while you were gone, Anthony and I were talking, like he said, about horror games and just about games in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of got scolded for starting to talk about games while you were gone because I was the one that said that I wanted to talk about games. Um, but... I have recently started playing, I don't know if you have heard of it, just being, you know, kind of immersed in the industry to a certain degree, but a game called The Medium. No, not played that. So it's a fairly recent game that came out. Console? What's up? Is that on console? uh, Xbox. Okay. Yeah, it's Xbox. It was made as a, as like a launch, not launch. It was made as an exclusive that was a couple of months after launch for Xbox Series X. Um, So like you can only play it on the new X and S consoles, but I was playing it, and it's this really cool concept that really can only be executed on something as powerful as a Series X with the amount of processing power that it has. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's about this woman that, you know, is back in the early 90s, and she's a medium, and the game happens simultaneously between the spirit world and the real world. And Mm -hmm. so certain objects and places can be kind of touched and um, they can be, what's the, interacted with in either one or the other world, but it's rarely both worlds. And Mm -hmm. within the spirit world, the only way that you can go fully into it is to do what's called an out-of-body experience, which is a timed thing, because your body actually starts to disintegrate the longer that you do it. And if you like wait long enough, then you just, you die and you go back. But it's an extremely off-putting game because there are some blockages in the game that you have to get through, which is literally just like a sheet of skin that's fused together in the middle and the game doesn't just let you press a to cut through it right it makes you go into a cutscene, and you have to guide with the left stick a razor blade all the way down the like length of this skin sheet and you just hear the flesh just like tearing as you're doing the razor blade thing it's like it got to the point where it happened so much that i just like held down the the stick and like looked yeah and tried to distract (laughs) myself from hearing just a solid 30 seconds of yeah and the character from time to time was like, this is disgustingly satisfying. And I was like, absolutely not. No way yeah, in any way, shape, or form. It's uh, satisfying. Okay, I'll have to check that out. I, I, to be honest, like, I don't know what you guys have been playing, but I've been playing the new Resident Evil, which I'm really enjoying. It's not as good as Village. 7. It's not, as, yeah, it's not as, like, 7 was brilliant. But, um, yeah, I'm playing that at the moment, 8, which is good. Uh, mm-hmm. But it seems like they've kind of toned down the horror... A bit. I think they sort of said that seven was so scary they want, kind of wanted to make it a little bit less um, terrifying. But it, yeah, seven was like hard to play sometimes. Mm-hmm. It was it was so scary. The one game that I never want to touch ever in the history of me ever existing is Outlast. Outlast one and two. I will never play those games. Why okay. are we not, yeah, well, not? What are you? Why are you not playing those, this game? Why? Because that's that was one of the first games where the key mechanic is we're not going to give you any way to fight back, but we're going to make you be constantly attacked and chased by just like everything under the sun. And it's a game where you have to like find batteries around this mental hospital to keep your flashlight powered because the flashlight drains power the more that you use it. And there's like okay. a cell phone that the battery can die and the reception goes in and out and you have to like the first game is finding your way out of a, a mental hospital that you go in to investigate. And then the yeah. second game is you like go into a religious cult commune that you have to find your way out of. Um, it's they're like widely regarded as fantastic horror games, but like there's a reason as to why there's an emphasis on horror. And I yeah, tried you, playing the first one and I made it like five minutes and couldn't play anymore. Yeah. There, you have to be in the mood, I think for those games. Sometimes I tend to like, obviously cause having young kids, I don't really play a lot of like violent games anymore. Or mm-hmm. if I do, I have to play those really late at night. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been, I've got a, we've got a Switch as well. So I've been playing that mm-hmm. a bit. I've been playing like, um, me and the kids have been playing um, Link's Awakening, which is really nice. If you've played nice. that. Nice. Are you excited for Breath the Re- of the Wild too? 
Yeah, I gotta say, Breath of the Wild, the first game, I didn't really get on with that game, if I'm honest. Really? Every, I think it's an amazing game, and I understand why everyone loves it. But the whole thing with the weapons just deteriorating all the time just drove me insane. Yeah, that is like people's biggest gripe with it. I think I've played through that game like five times. Okay. So I'm like on the opposite spectrum with enjoying the game. But I, um, I kind of, I don't know, I enjoyed being anxious all the time that, you know, the sword or shield or whatever that I was using broke. Um, but I do, I do certainly get as to why it would be off-putting for you that the weapons break as you go along and play through. Um, but I am really excited about the new Pokemon that's coming out, which is done in the style of Breath of the Wild with like the open world kind of like overworld kind of thing, um, where the Pokemon are out and about in the tall grass and just walking around and it's an all three dimensional thing. It's super exciting to see where they're taking that. Um, I'll be honest. I think Pokemon, that, Pokemon was one of those things that sort of passed me by a little bit. I think I was too old when it was popular. I'm, it came, I out, in it came out in the nineties. I am the same boat as you. I don't. I don't. Same get with like it. Power, Power Rangers, Rangers is as well. one of the greatest franchises to ever exist. I, I would I, totally disagree with you on that one, but okay. I think it's like it's not the same with but... stuff. Stuff like Power Rangers as well. It's all that kind of era of like early nineties kind of. I think by then, I, I don't know, I was... Too old for it? I don't know. I just... Yeah, maybe I was just too old for it. See, like, when I think back to yeah, my I youth think... and cartoons, I think back to, like, the real Ghostbusters. I think of G.I. Joe. Same. I think of Batman. Mm. I think of, like, you know, like, that Batman cartoon back in the 90s. If you didn't get home in school in time to watch that and find out, what, like, that was the best. Are like you, you know, the animated series? A hundred percent. Yeah, and it's like Turtles... Thundercats. Turtles, yep. He Man. Oh yeah. Now we're uh, talking Mask. now we're talking good stuff. Mask. Did you watch Mask? Oh the the, <laughs> the the cartoon version of the movie? No, no, like Mask as in the cars that transformed. Had, like, Matt Tracker was like the leader of the of No, the, I uh, never heard of this. Mask. Oh man, it's amazing. You know See, when I was growing up, I kind of grew up in the early two thousands, so in the age of like Avatar the Last Airbender, Teen Titans, like the original Teen Titans before it got bastardized into whatever they're doing with it now. Um not t- Anthony, I know you're big into Titans, so I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Teen Titans mm-hmm. Go is like the bastardized version of it. But like, you know, Avatar, <laughs> Teen Titans, um, all of the the early morning Nickelodeon stuff, so like fairly odd parents, uh and then, you know, the the Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. Like, I grew up in all of that stuff, and I really enjoyed it. But, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm kind of catching up in the, the backdated cartoons from the early 90s and late 90s when I was too young to really watch anything. Yeah, and, sure. you know, it, it's really difficult, in my opinion, to formulate which one I think is, like, the golden era of cartoons. But I think Teen Titans and Avatar alone kind of take the cake out of any of the ones that I've seen. Yeah. I'm sticking, like, going back to video games again, if there's anything else that I'm playing as well you, you, know. Do you know what, do you know what? Like a guilty pleasure oh i can't yeah. wait uh wait, is... can, we, can we guess first can we all take one guess go on go all right it. bailey go ahead and take a guess animal crossing i have played that but no it's not that are you a big fan of food fighters oh my what? god I literally explicitly said at the intro, we're not talking about Food Fighters. There was a reason as to why it was said. I don't even know what Food Fighters is. Oh, <laughs> hold on. No, let no, me explain. No, 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 no. In the late 80s, oh, there, was this, the there were these the there these amazing toy awesome. creations of, of, of food that were fighters, and, and they would box. fight like General Hamburger against okay. Colonel Mustard, and they would fight each other and had a little it – was, it was a fun time back then. Okay. They really missed the opportunity to, to do an ice cream character that was Colonel Custard. I think there was. Oh, of course there was. That's silly name, <laughs> I'm assuming. Um, no, no please tell no, us. The, Fortnite. Oh, no, it's the guilty I play Fortnite. Fortnite. Really? Yeah, and like, it's, I hate really myself Fortnite. for it. I kind of hate myself for it. But it's, <laughs> it's really addictive. Anthony, and I, and I, I started playing it. I believe the amount of invites I get from it. Oh, really? What's oh on? yeah, he's every time. Every time that I'm, it's like 11 p.m. at night. And I'm trying to work, and I get a text from Anthony, and it's like winner, winner, chicken dinner, comma Fortnite question mark. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to, Anthony. I don't know how many times <laughs> I have to tell you. And then any time that I say no, he goes, Oh, sorry, that was my son. And it's like, Okay, yeah, sure. Excuses, excuses. It's, it's like a constant thing with this guy. Here, let, let me put it this way, Luke. My my downtime 
in in the world of um, video games. I have translated into being in the studio and creating um, shows or do other things. I don't. I am considerably like this is this weekend is the first weekend I have not been on the road for my son and his uh, as you would say football. Um, okay. Because we are literally on the road considerably almost every weekend around the country for his, his um, for him. He's he's a, a very high level goalkeeper, so we're oh, always wow. doing something for him. So we, I, I don't have time. I'd love to play video games. He plays Fortnite. I I tried a couple times because I back in the mid two thousands I got really into Call of Duty and like same. the zombies and like I yeah, love like same. Call of Duty zombies. Like yeah, it's uh, great. Oh yeah, you can't go wrong. Like the especially the earlier versions. Like you yeah. would just I lived on Code Red Mountain Dew and um Doritos with my buddy <laughs> and like the California pizza kitchen like bar- Yeah, and the and the California pizza kitchen, like the barbecue chicken pizzas. Like we literally that was like every Friday night, like that's what we played. And then Guitar Hero, we did that for a while too. But Get like but then it. Yeah, but I mean, like, you know, as you get older, you know, your kids start taking up more of your time and then you realize, like, that is kind of like, you know, that's fun. Like, I, you know, I don't I don't miss video games really that much. I mean, I do. I have a Nintendo Switch. I play that off, uh, you know, when we're traveling and stuff. I played um, Super Smash Brothers when I was in West Virginia. And um, uh, what was the other game I was playing? Uh, the Mortal Kombat 11. But I mean, okay. but, I, you know. That's yeah, it, like, my... my- my go to at the moment is just and Ghost of Tsushima is the other game that I've been playing as well. Oh, don't even get me started on Ghost of Tsushima. That is, in my opinion, one of the pinnacles of game design. Yeah, it's, over it's the last, amazing. Like, 10 years. Although, although I'm trying to get a PS5 because I want to play it. I haven't finished the game, and I've got a mm. base PS4, which is just every time I turn it on, it just sounds like it's going to blow up. It just yeah. the fans are so loud, and that <laughs> game just obviously is just sucking all the power out of the console. So oh, I've yeah, sort of I've just like, like stopped. Kimisawa. Yeah, I've just stopped playing the game. So I'm like, I'm going to get a PS5, yeah. and then I'm going to get another copy of the game, and I'm going to play it on the PS5. Um, yeah. So most, so mostly, I just play on the, I just play on the Xbox now, like, and the Switch, pretty much. Yeah, the pretty much like in my downtime when I'm not illustrating and working, um, I'm playing video games just because you know I just moved to Minneapolis, so I don't know a ton of people here, so there's not really that much of a social life yet for me here. Sure. Um, but I, I have. You know, any any disposable income that I have pretty much goes to plants, to shoes, or to video games. And so when the PS5 came out, I was up all night on drop day. I scored one at 4.30 in the morning on Target.com. And I had to drive an hour and a half from Baltimore when I was living there at the time in order to get one because that was the closest Target that had it in stock. And so I got that, and then I was lucky enough to nail an Xbox Series X. Oh, and nice. so I have both the Series X, the PS5, and the Switch here that I play everything on. And I kind of, like, move back and forth between them. But I played Ghost of Tsushima the day that it came out. I had the, like, day one drop edition or whatever on the PS4. And mm. then they gave people the free upgrade to the PS5. Ah, okay. So, I so maybe I've got that. Again. Yeah. Maybe yeah, I've got should, that. Because I, I got it the day it came out. So um, yeah, I've well, been holding off getting the PS5. PS4, What's that? Sorry? I just said anybody that has the PS4 version has the free update. Okay, cool. Like they, all you have to do is just log onto the PS5 and download it from the store. Okay, excellent. Yeah, because like we've just moved house, so uh, mm. we've got like a we've allocated a room which is going to be like the playroom where we're going to play video games mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but that room is currently just like full of boxes, and I'm like, yeah. once that room is sorted, I'm going to get my PS5. I'm kind of hoping that the they'll the price might have come down maybe as well by that yeah. point. Um, well, I don't it, know if it will because they're just about to release a giant expansion for it, uh, okay. which is the Iki, the Ghost of Iki Island, and okay. that entire thing is like a huge, like you know, twelve to fifteen hour expansion. That's an entirely new island to explore, mm-hmm. and there's like fireworks mechanics and explosions and like all of these new mechanics that they're introducing. So I, it's like I don't think that game mm-hmm. price is going to go down for a. a long I just meant I'm in the console. Like huge. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean the, the price of the PS5, but yeah, like in the I UK, know. they like as soon as they they come back in stock, they're just gone. So yeah, no, I'm like I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush because the house stuff at the moment. So I get uh, that. I'll, I'll pick it up once. Yeah, uh, I, just... I think if I said to my wife, I'm gonna go buy a PS5, and she's gonna be like, well, we need furniture in the new house, so <laughs> maybe I should buy the furniture so my children have somewhere to sit and sleep, and then maybe I'll get. <laughs> Maybe then I'll get the PS5. That's but um, I think, but yeah, um, I'm just playing everything on Xbox at the moment. I've just, I've got like, um, I was very lucky that when I worked on Gears Five, 
uh, they sent me uh, the Gears 5 for Xbox, this fancy one. Um, so I'm just using... Did you get a Series X? No, it's not. It's just, it's the uh, I, I forget which Xbox which, One. But, Xbox One S, oh, Xbox One X, is it like the super duper? Yeah, the one version. that was the last one that they released. The last one, the Series X and the S. It's yeah, like yeah, the, yeah, I got you. it's like the sort of block of ice version with the Gears Omen in it. It's that one. So it's if not you... the one that's like the the you know the the Series X that I'm talking about. It's like a giant box, pretty much, and that's it with no features on it. No, it's just it's the preview Xbox One. This one is. I got you. I got you. It's like um, the last yeah, of the, the Xbox One. Yeah, the 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 last Xbox Samurai. Um, the game that I just finished up on Xbox that I don't know if you played it before or not. That I it was actually way better than I could have ever anticipated was um, Sunset Overdrive. I don't know if you you've heard. Of I it know the game. Or, uh, I know the game. I haven't played it. Really, really phenomenal. It was made by Insomniac, who are the ones who developed the Marvel Spider Man game that recently yes, came out. That's why I know um, about and it. And you yeah. can one hundred percent tell. Yeah, you can one hundred percent tell by looking at the movement mechanics in Sunset Overdrive that it was the same people, just because the way that you interact with the environment, you can uh -huh. tell that they, like they busted their asses to create those mechanics and then just moved them over to Spider Man because they were already existing yeah. and applied the four K graphics and Spider Man and everything into. It. And it's so funny because the guy that voiced peter parker also voices the main male character in sunset overdrive and so okay. it literally feels like i'm just playing a reskinned spider-man where the character yeah. is a, like an amalgamation of spider-man and deadpool because that game consistently breaks the fourth wall with like playing in it and talking to the the people outside of it and referencing that it's a game all the time so okay. but that game is like it's it's wildly fun and it's okay. on xbox um one so you you'd be able to play it on there as well. Okay. Um, they just it's on Game Pass. Yeah, because Game Pass is really good as well. I kind of feel like that's oh, where yeah, they're well, going with sure. games now. Is it's like this kind of like, yep, online service. It's almost like that sort of like it's almost like Netflix in a way for games. Yeah. Is sort of how I see it. Um, I'm I'm okay with it though because they have so oh, yeah, many good cool. games on there. And oh, they're it's great. Doing all the day one exclusives to it. So it's definitely an incentive to pick up an Xbox. I would say that. Yeah, no, I. That's I, literally. I'm not buying a single game for the Series X. Like, I'm literally just doing Game Pass in the console. That's and that's that's how like I. That's play. enough for me. Yeah. I think I think I will. The, the only reason I'm I'm getting a, a PS5 is so I can just play the exclusives like the God of War, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. That kind of thing. God of War Ragnarok. Whenever but I'll play out. like any other game. I'll probably just play on Game Pass from now on. Well, I pre-ordered Halo Infinite because I'm okay. a Halo a Halo fan. Love and Halo. And yeah. back and back for blood, which is that new zombie game coming out in October. But yeah. and then also, I did pre-order Tony Hawk One and Two for the Switch, which comes out. I don't know if it came. I, don't, I may have to go pick it up. No, I think it comes out next month. But um, I thought, isn't it out? I don't think. I don't think it's, it's it, they're porting it to the Switch. So it's out on all other consoles, but the Switch, the port. No, I just thought it was out on, on Switch. It longer. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was already out. But yeah, okay, cool. Because yeah, uh, but that actually, brings back some memories. Segue because. That's a good segue because I know we wanted to talk to you, Luke, about this. Both of the boards behind you on your wall, they were created for Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, the remake, right? Yep, they were, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, did so, you say that you had a story about those? Well, no, it's, it's like, uh, obviously, the originally the designs were done for in-game, so you would, obviously you unlock the skins, don't you, in-game, and then mm -hmm. I still, by the way, I still haven't unlocked my own skins in-game. Yeah, I was going to say. Because I am so terrible. I'm so terrible <laughs> at it. <laughs> Yeah, but those like, and then the decks that uh, Jess Seaman of Landland, um, those decks that you two created, I have not unlocked them because I'm not good enough at the game. Yeah, it's so. hard. It's really hard. I'm like, I like message the, uh, I should message the the uh, the guy that I dealt with. It's the art director there and say, is there any way you can just unlock them for me? <laughs> is there way you can just like do something to my profile and unlock them for me? Um, yeah, so they they. Obviously, they never made them into physical boards. And then as a thank you mm -hmm. for working on the game, those just turned out. They didn't tell me they were sending them to me, so it was a really nice surprise. Um, so, yeah, the art director of the game has actually sent me those, which was really nice of him. Besides, um, besides your work in Tony Hawk with, and, and these video games, where else has anybody that's tuning in right now seen your work? Uh, I do a lot of like gig posters, and I've worked with Metallica um you do a lot of metallica work and it's all super fantastic too oh thanks man yeah no i love metallica the band i've loved, loved that band since i was a kid anyway i've seen them so many times so it's kind of a dream working with them mm -hmm. uh so yeah a lot of sort of band stuff like that uh what else 
Um, I've done some, like, I've worked with Arrow Video, so they might have seen, like, I did the cover for Donnie Darko uh, for the 4K version of that as well. You, oh, you did the Donnie Darko cover? Yeah, for the, the, the recent release on the 4K oh, Ultra boys. HD version of the, of the film. See, Luke, you're witnessing a rare sight right here because Anthony usually has a little iPad in front of him that he uses to look up everything. But it is. It's, the it's, that I bet it's, CM uses phone. it's right here. My iMac that is over here is um, it's 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 in the, it's in a moment. Uh, I'm just trying to think what other stuff I've done really. Oh, um, gee. No, you did a collaboration with Dan Mumford. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Didn't you do that collab with Dan a couple years ago for uh, the Comic Con thing? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, we've been. Well, I've sort of briefly spoken to him about doing another one as well. But that we spoke yeah, about. I, that. Um, just, it's a just before sorry, lockdown. A fly, like flying around my head. Right cool. um, but the yeah, the um, I can't really say anything. But that might be one of the first times that you and my work intersect. That that's all I can really say. Being that there's a lot of secrecy around that project right now. But. Um, What's that? The, yeah, that collab was super cool. The collaboration with Dan Mumford. Yeah, yeah, that was it was yeah, cool. Yeah, I can't really say much about like a collab with Dan Mumford. All I can say is that that might be the first time that you and I intersect on a project. Oh, okay. Wink, wink. Can't say much on it, but oh, okay. trying to get the people excited. Good. You and you and else gets me excited. Jenko jeans. Oh, yep. What the? We got the iPad. Oh man, what is? I had those exact. That looks like it's been. That looks like it's been ones. photoshopped. No, dude, I had those exact same jeans, and the thing that's I remember that like I because I was in school. Like, if you put your pens in your back pocket, you would forget about them, and then your mom would wash them, and then they would get like destroyed. Um. So yeah, like the those legit. <laughs> I owned those, and I owned ones that had like they were the um. They had they collaborated with um, Crazy Taxi and they had like taxi stripes on the side. There were blue jeans with taxi stripes on the side and they had a big taxi on your ass. Like it was a like it looked like a like the back end of a taxi on your ass. Mental. It was. I don't I don't know what the hell I was get, thinking. I don't think we got those. See, yet. Anthony had the taxi ass, but meanwhile I'm over here with the dump truck ass because I got a lot of junk in the trunk back there. So it's just really unfortunate that Anthony was able to still look like a taxi with those Jankos on and then I wear skinny jeans and I look like a dump truck. And you <laughs> yeah. guys talk about being old. Over here, look at me. I carry the stress and weight of a 47-year-old in my back pocket. <laughs> well, then maybe you need to do some uh, meditation then, buddy. <laughs> Maybe, I need meditation in a treadmill. Maybe, maybe you should relax on the skinny jeans. Maybe that's it's tightening up everything. Maybe you need to release, let things yeah, breathe. I wear slim now, okay? I'm getting better in my old age. <laughs> so I don't want to hear it. Um, I think you do sort of reach a certain yeah, age where so, you just start to wear practical trousers. I've definitely started to start wearing practical trousers. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you say pants. Luke, I will say Sorry, you say pants. You I say miss. trousers. Sorry. Yes. One of yes. The, Luke, one of the things that you did miss while your internet was buzzing out is Anthony did in fact do his British impression. And okay. let me say, you are lucky that your internet cut out. Oh, really? um, it sounded like some sort of a 2007 diabolical movie villain that was a cross section between a British person and a Swedish person. I need to hear it now. Well, you'll have to tune back in because I don't, I don't know. There's no reason for me to do it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you, you've built it up too I mean, much. I can try it's too much pressure. Of the impression, it sounded a little something along the lines of, well, "You will pay the ransom." <laughs> and he, he, the octave did swing up and down like that, and it was just like, "I call soccer football." And I, when did it, no, you don't know that doesn't sound? You now sound like Bane from Batman from the movie. You don't sound you like the. Were, I, you were born in the dark. I have a face mask, and it vibrates. I'm very popular. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Did you, We did talk about Black Widow. Did you see the Black Widow movie yet or no? No. I've got to say, like, all the Marvel stuff for me, I'm just, like, I'm so sort of... Over it? Uh, over it a little bit, yeah. It's just... I don't, I don't oh. dislike it, and I get it, and it's great. And when I watch them, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. But it's just, like, it's everywhere. Yep. 
and it's just like I kind of feel like when you like once you've seen one or two, you kind of seen them all in a way. And yeah. Sorry if I've offended loads of people. Yeah, but on the internet you can't say, say that. that Ragnarok and Winter Soldier feel like run of the mill Marvel movies. Though. Oh no, I don't think they're bad films. It's no, just, I just think it's like it's so. Is it just really oversaturated now? Yeah. I don't know. Is that the right word? No, yeah, Ragnarok. But, Ragnarok was good. I, I'm not a big Winter Soldier fan. I never have been. Um, but I mean, there's some good ones. But like I like the Loki show. Like I enjoyed the first episode. After that, that show fell off a cliff for me. Yeah. Well, that's because it's a lot of like really deep cut fan service Loki stuff. And I know we talked about that on last month's episode with Robert, where him and I kind of talked about it. And Anthony, you looked at us like we were trailing off into another dimension. Um, but it's just a lot of really deep cut comic book Loki stuff that they like pulled out for that show. And I feel like a really similar vein of what they're going to get into is going to be for what if, just because what if with it being based on an actual comic series called what if, like it's all fan service. Like it's, Mm -hmm. you know, it's what if King T'Challa was star Lord or like, you know, what if Peggy Carter became captain America or what if Dr. Strange was like a dark magic user like it's all Marvel fans that are like, okay, cool, yeah, that's <clears> rad, but you know, like, let's just flip the script on that and see what happens. And so yeah. I feel like a lot of these TV shows are kind of made for like tried and true, dedicated Marvel fans, which is different from what people expected, just because people thought that these TV shows were going to be kind of uh, accessible in a way where people that weren't super into the into the Marvel universe would be able to dive into the Marvel universe without really yeah. having to do a lot of research. I like the Marvel universe, you know, I love the comics yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And I do, I do like the films. It's just, I'm not going to be like rushing out to see them. I'll just watch them when I get around to it. I mean, there's still like a load of, there's, there's still a load of the, the film, the actual films that I haven't seen. Like I've, I've like which ones? I've, uh, I think I only watched the first Thor film. I don't think so I've seen all... any the other, I haven't seen, I haven't seen Ragnarok. I haven't seen the, oh boy. No, I know, I know. <laughs> I haven't seen them. And I've got Disney Plus, so I could watch them all yeah. at home right now. So Spider-Man has always been my two... favourite, if I'm honest. Like, the, I love all the Spidey Which films. Which one? I love all the Spidey all films. The Spider-Man films. And I really like the Iron Man movies as well. Well, listen, um, Luke, I'm going sa- to save you a lot of time, Luke. The best, the best suggestion I can give you is instead of watching all the Marvel movies, just go ahead and watch all the Fast and Furious movies because it's all about family and everything is much better. Wow. Yeah, but you so say that with the I... impending with the <laughs> impending on. Fast and Furocalypse, um, with <laughs> Vin Diesel and Dwayne the Rock Johnson beefing on social media right now, Love what it. side are you guys gonna take? Oh I think I'm team rock. I'm not I'm not following I'm not following this at all. Yeah, I can't I can't I can't choose sides. I can't choose sides, unfortunately. Dwayne yeah. the Rock Johnson, hands down. Mm. But Dwayne John yeah. but 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 Vin Diesel is all about family, and I am all about family. Oh my god! There he goes with the thing. I I can't tell you how many times he's brought up Fast and Furious. Two, it's, it's, he's brought up he's brought it up twice. Those are films Just as well. Two times I've, more than enough. That I've yeah, I kind of I've gone back and started rewatching them all again just to remind myself. We did it just before we moved house actually. Yeah. They, I, they like, are, I kind so of feel like I need to watch them. And they are so like the first one is so dated when you watch it now. It's just so yeah. it's it's kind of so bad. It's good. Yep. In a way. Yeah. I'll say it before and I'll say it again. The only one that lives rent free in my head is Tokyo Drift. Well, then yeah. you have that to is, see that. That is then one of you the only have, ones. Then you have to see the new one because they all the characters from that movie are in the new one. Oh, you're talking about the one where they swing a car across the across the canyon on a crane. That one. No, th- this we go to outer space in this one, buddy. Do we? We really? go to outer in the new Fast and You're Furious. Joking. You're joking. In How do we get into space? Actually, <laughs> the reason they go to outer space is because of the people from Tokyo Drift. They create a car that is wait, wait, capable wait, wait. of think... going in outer space. Do you guys hear that? I think I hear an exclusive audio clip that they made for the show. Houston, oh uh, Houston, we have a family. <laughs> that's right. And that's uh, that's the entire synopsis of the movie right there. That's right. <laughs> I think no, Anthony, didn't I send you a meme that was the fi- the X-wing fighter squadron yes. from Star Wars where they look over and they saw Toretto in his Fast and Furious 1 car looking over. <laughs> yes, yes you did. I uh you you definitely <laughs> did send me that. 
Uh, <laughs> I saw it and I was immediately like, "This, it's it's going to hold no relevance in my head at all, other than just <laughs> sending this to Anthony right now. After this, I'm going to forget it even existed. So, well, you, you just brought it up, so it shows how much you remember it. Eh, well, see i'm yeah so so luke so talk so talking well listen you don't like good movies we got it we luke understands the the culture and understanding of what fast and furious is and that it is a movie you don't like good movies directed at me yes Uh, okay Uh, okay, oh oh wait there was something i did want to talk about so you brought up pokemon and i do he's gonna talk about that well i'm gonna cut him over he's gonna talk about pam anderson and pam anderson was in a movie about a motorcycle (laughs) <laughs> nope, nope, not talking about that at all. I'm going to talk about it. So you brought a Pokemon. I, I never was into Pokemon at all, but I do have a funny Pokemon story. There was a game that came out a couple of years ago um, on the phone where people would go yeah. around and collect shit. Yeah, Pokemon Go. Yes. Okay, so I was... Yeah, I, know, wor- I know that. <laughs> okay. So I was working in a Walmart. I was put. Uh, I was hooking up the wall of eyes, their TVs in the back. I was in the restroom. And as I'm in the bathroom... I hear someone in front of the stall and they're making noise and they're on their, I can see through the crack, they're on their phone and it's pointed towards me. And then I'm like, (laughs) dude, what are you doing? So he runs out the bathroom. So I'm immediately thinking this guy's taking video of me while I'm going to the bathroom. So I'm pissed. (laughs) I jump off the toilet. I've run out there. I grab this kid and I'm yelling at him. I'm berating him like you pervert, you blah, blah, blah. Like really laying into this kid, like this probably 22 year old kid yell at his script. Cause I really thought that he was, and he starts crying and the manager of Walmart runs out. It's like, what are you doing? And like, this guy was thinking, he's like, no, no, no. I'm like, check his phone, check his phone. And then he says, he's like, no. I, and he starts crying. He's like, no, I was just trying to catch the Pokemon. <laughs> True. Yeah. The worst story. I've ever done is some light breaking and entering for Pokemon go, never going into a bathroom and doing that. Yeah. It sounds like some sort of weird metaphor. It was, I, I was, yeah. I was very frustrated. <laughs> I was trying to catch both Pokemon. He, but he, this, this kid, I'm talking bawling, just bawling. And that's what, he, and I was like, are you fuck? And I, I was like, from that point on, I was like, I just have this, um, like anytime I have, I hear someone talk about Pokemon, it brings me back to that moment of sitting on a toilet and thinking of some guy videotaping me as I'm going to the bathroom. I played Pokemon Go for like two weeks after Same. it came out, but then never touched it again after yeah, that. I, I was like, oh, this is cool. But then it wasn't. So. Yeah, I I played it for a bit, and then I kind of played it with my kids because they thought it was cool. They didn't really know what Pokemon was because they're too young to really know what it is. I didn't really. I know of it obviously, but didn't. I wasn't into it that much. And yeah. So I when I a couple was, of weeks in, and I was, was like, younger. I'm yeah, when I was younger, I was enamored with the, the the Pokemon series, and I'm still enamored with the Pokemon series. Like I will on my deathbed say that it's one of the greatest series of video games of all time, um, just with like the sheer size <laughs> and just lore that has been created for it. And Anthony, we can get into this another time. But <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, um, one of the first things I ever bought myself, it was even predating the uh, uh, CD player and the Pokemon 1 CD. Um, we went to my family during the summer. There wasn't really much to do in my hometown. And so one of the big things that we did on weekends was we went to yard sales and garage sales just because they, you know, happened all summer long. And so we just drove around and went to whichever ones we could see. And I remember one of the first purchases that I ever made on my own was a Game Boy Color and a copy of Pokemon Gold. But the issue was they were both broken. The Game Boy could not work unless it was plugged into the wall and the game was corrupted. So you couldn't actually save it. And so the only way for me to play it all the way through is if the Game Boy was never unplugged or turned off because the second that it was, I lost my entire game that was within it. And so I can't tell you how many times I got so close to the Elite Four at the end of the game and then I go to like a soccer game or I go to like a soccer tournament or something and I come home and I find out that my mom or my dad cleaned and unplugged the Game Boy from the wall and just deleted the entire game. And so I feel like... Ever since then, I have really just learned just like how important it is to just make sure that you take every moment in stride and that you just, as Dom Toretto has said, remember how important family is. And that was the entire moral kind of story of why I'm so attached to Pokemon. It has just taught me so many life lessons. And I feel like it was almost like um, a Fran Drescher to me when I was younger, like a nanny, just being that it properly raised me and taught me the value of just just time (laughs) and family. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. (laughs) Anthony, you okay there, buddy? I I don't even know how to um, 
comment on you addressing <laughs> the nanny as poke. Right. So, so Luke, what have uh, you uh, been watching that. recently? What is what is in the uh, the good old TV box, as you guys call it over in the UK? Just trying to remind myself what have, what have I been watching. Um. You know what? We've moved house. I know. I know. I've said this a few times, but we just have not really sat down and watched TV for a while. If I'm honest, and plus, like, we tend to watch like a lot of Netflix, mm-hmm. and you know, we haven't really. You know, there hasn't really been a lot on there that's kind of grabbed me recently. If I'm honest. Well, I will tell you that there's two things on Netflix that I'd highly recommend. First of all, there's a three part series called Fear Street. Um, that's based yes, off. An- I've heard of this. I need to watch it. I it's ama- it. it's absolutely, absolutely genius. It's based off an R.L. Okay. Stein book that I read when I was younger, and I didn't realize it till the, th- the third movie came out. But basically, it is three movies that inter- inter- intertwine each other, and they're all about like how everything happens from 1994 to 1974 to 1966. 1966 to, ni- to 1666. Um, and they're amazing. And then the other thing on Netflix, Netflix, I would highly recommend is like yesterday it just dropped. Um, it is the movies that made us, and they talk about Back to the Future, Pretty Woman, oh, Jurassic brilliant. Park, and Forrest Trump Gump. But on the same note, because I was, watched the I watched the I watched the toys that made us. Yes, and there was something else as well, wasn't there? Well, the sorry, movies Karen. that made us, the one that just came out, season two. Yep. So there is yes, a season one that has even more movies than that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ghostbusters. Oh yeah, I'll totally watch that. Yeah. yeah. But then also the it's people really that worth watching. the people that made the movies that made us and the toys that made us made a series on Disney called Behind the Attraction that uh-huh. just they just dropped and it's the stories of um, the Jungle Cruise, uh, Space Mountain, Tower of Terror, uh, Space Tours, and something else I'm probably forgetting. Um, but anyway, but it's like the story of like how the first ride was made. The whole story of like how Disney had his hands on it at some point, yeah. like what took so long to make it, then how okay. they took that version and put it in like like the Haunted Mansion is the Haunted Mansion over in you're in like Paris, but it's not the Haunted Mansion. It's called like the Haunted West, and it's like Disney Paris has a version of the Haunted Mansion, but it's like it deals with like Westerners and like like an old saloon, like ghost stories. But then in Japan, they don't believe in ghosts. So it's called the haunted mist. No, no, it's mystics or something like that. And it deals yeah. with like voodoo, like some like monkey that touches a button that like magic dust, like turns the whole place into like being alive. I don't know. It's, it's pretty crazy, but it's interesting to see like how Disney like tries to mirror its parks in different places and how they do it or like how things are open. Like tower of terror is an interesting one. Um, and space tours was pretty good, but yeah, it's, those are really clever too. And that's on Disney plus, And that just came out as well. Okay. Did yeah. you guys know they are making a live action safari adventure movie starring Dwayne, the rock Johnson. That's based on the jungle cruise ride. Correct. It comes really? out on July 30th and it'll be on Disney plus. You can watch it for $30. Yes. I already, I'm already excited about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, and it's yeah, it's it's so wild. Um, but no, actually, I mean, so Luke, I mean, I Anthony, I know you know this, but Luke, if you don't know it, I just recently moved to Minneapolis, like I said a little bit ago, and okay. I've recently started to go to the Mia, which is the Minneapolis Institute of Art, and mm-hmm. they have this room that is meant to simulate um, an average day cycle within seven minutes of a Victorian London parlor. And so they have LED color light panels outside of these fake windows that it simulates sunrise all through the day, all the way to sunset and then night. And these like fake candles all turn on and they have sound effects that are like people talking, walking around in a crackling fire. And I've been in it three times now. And I got to say, it is one of the most off-putting experiences I've ever been in. (laughs) People love it because people are like, this is so comforting. I feel like I'm actually in it. There, There are some beautiful colors, but let me tell you, I have only been on the Haunted Mansion ride once uh, down in Florida at Walt Disney World. And it is, in my opinion, and I know people love it, one of the most terrifying experiences I have ever experienced. Okay. Um, being that they do such a good job with the special effects, like um, portraying that there are ghosts in the mirrors and next to you and all of that. And just like the sound effects are so akin to this day in the life of Victorian London room at the Mia 
that every time that I'm there, there are these massive mirrors on the wall. And I just so expect to see people ballroom dancing around the room in them. And it is, it's just like a constant state of waiting for the other shoe to drop while sitting in it, because you just feel like you're inside of the haunted mansion. And I don't know if you guys have ever been on the haunted mansion ride in Florida, but the thing starts by the roof of the ceiling actually raises up while you're in the room to make it feel like the room is dropping and all of the paintings in the room elongate to become these like really weird and horrific and like family friendly, grotesque images of ghosts. And it just, it feels like the room is just going to start becoming anamorphic and like things are just about to get really weird for a full seven minutes while you're in this installation at the museum. It's very weird and off-putting. Well, actually you are going down and it's an elevator bringing you to a level for the ride. See, this is, Anthony keeps me level. He always says the cutest shit, but he also keeps me level. So that's true. So, so Thanks. Luke, besides Netflix and, and this Victorian thing that we're learning about here recently that scares um, uh, Bailey, you're moved into your Listen, new studio. Are scary. Yeah. You're, you've moved into your new studio. I know that you've uh, had a lot of Metallica prints come out. What else do you have? And this, the, the Donnie Darko thing, which, P.S., I don't know if that's going to be a print or something. But like that needs to be like that is I I've Donnie Darko is probably one of my favorite movies to kind of like scare me about how small we are in the world like that That's really yeah it really like you know there's a lot of movies that I watch it just it just makes you realize like that the relevance of what you think is important is really not yeah yeah and um that is that is such a great like. I don't know, level you off movie. Um, but I've never found art for that. Like, I've seen prints that people have made and I've enjoyed them, but nothing ever like, like nothing that I'd ever put on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that I'd put on the wall. Like that is just well, that, like the, that box set comes with a print. Yeah, but it's folded and I'm very yeah. anal about things. I can't do yeah, folded. True. True. But Let's I mean, it, I'm going to start sending you any print that you buy from me folded. And I don't have prints of that one. because of that. Well, I just want to let you know, I, you know, Bailey, I don't support your artwork. I don't buy your stuff. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, God. Just joking. You know He's, in that. fact, told me, he was like, why can't you be the kind of artist that Dom Toretto is? That's it's right. Because you don't value family enough. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's how we roll. So do you, what are you working on right now? Is there anything you're working on right now you can talk about? Um... Not really, no. I have got, I've got, I've got a lot of stuff, but I don't know how much I can say. I've got, um, I've got a new movie poster I'm working on, which I haven't done for a while. Wow. Um, oh, I'm interested to see what that is. Um, I always like it when you do movie posters because it's a really I, fresh take on whatever you do. I haven't it. done one for ages. If I'm honest, I always, yeah. I kind of struggle with movie posters a little bit. I kind of think maybe my art doesn't cater to it very well, but this one that I'm doing, uh, it's a huge film. Everybody knows the film. Wow. Um, and, it makes me uh, so curious when you. And I've been working on. I think I've been working on this for about ten months now. Ooh, okay, ten months. So it's and, a movie. And that, and that, I'm not solidly working on it for ten months, but with all the feedback, it's official. It's all gotcha. licensed. So, um, so is it is being this, released for the gallery? Uh, yes. Is this a movie that came out more than twenty years ago? Uh. Came out in the early nineties. Does this movie have <laughs> things in it? Does it? Does this thing? You can't say what it is. I know, I know what you're gonna do now. I know what you're doing. Uh, does Does it have animals or potentially? <laughs> is Is there animals or potentially um, extinct animals in this movie? Maybe. Does I know. I, like I I feel like. I, uh, you know it's so because that's going i mean i don't know if this is the movie but so i actually know quite a few artists that are involved in a jurassic park gallery that's opening up because it's it's going on it's like 30th anniversary soon or some crazy shit like it's i can't believe it's it made me feel old because i remember seeing that in the theaters i didn't say it was jurassic park i didn't say you said it was jurassic park <laughs> never you just said dressing fat I never and said, said no, whatever. no 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 just saying in general I know a lot of artists are doing a dressing park thing but no you know 
I was thinking the other day of like, do you remember the first? Like, I remember the two movies from when I was younger that I went to that like really stuck in my head. If I'm like your first time going to a theater and that experience behind it, and the two for me is I remember sitting on my dad's lap for the original Batman in the theaters eating popcorn, and the other one was Jurassic Park. Like, I remember going to the theater that I ended up working at mm-hmm. later on down the road, and they had like someone had made these columns and like it was made out of you know cardboard. And it was painted, but it was cool because, like, the, the usher would open up the doors like you were going into Jurassic Park to go into the theaters. And I remember the first time you see the Baronosaurus, like, in like in real life, like, you know, not in real life, but on the screen. Like, at that time, that was just mind-blowing graphics. Yeah, and you were – it was crazy. It still, looks, it still looks good now as well. Oh, God. I mean, it's, see, it's when not, he opened it, the gate. Yeah. I was just going to say, when he opened the, the doors to the theater and it was like he was opening the gate to the Jurassic Park, did he go, Welcome. To theater six, and then the the like soundtrack started playing over the over the speakers inside of it. Uh, no, and the, the, the the theater the, workers hated it because they had to stand over in the corner and make Brontosaurus sounds <laughs> as they were like stomping around, wearing giant like tube necks that went all the way up. No, no, Bailey, that did did not happen. We just had popcorn in our hands right, and went well, through I'm a guess, gate. I'm guessing your theater was not as fun as mine. So, well, you weren't alive at that time. You didn't get to enjoy the good movies back when me and Luke actually enjoyed good movies. Because what I remember, Luke, Luke, did you see The Matrix in the theaters? I did, yeah. When all you, of them, unfortunately, the last two. I lo- I loved them all. I can't wait for the new one to come out at the end of the year. But oh, the first the first film was amazing, but the for, end the end of yeah, the end of the it, third one is just they're like they're making what another Matrix. Yes, the a new ma- talking face at the end and the, all this. Uh, oh, no, I loved it. I loved it all. I love the Matrix. I love the idea behind it. I love the, the first imagery. Film was genius. Oh, the first one is absolutely genius, but I like the second third film. one. Like they're. <laughs> <laughs> the the second one where they're in the car chasing with the twin brothers yeah okay so when i got my i had gotten ju- i got a car and i was i had got the soundtrack for that and um like i had got so hyped up from it like i was like swerving through the highway like pretending i was um in the car like the twin brothers when it well that music was going on and um, i got my first ticket um from a cop going uh 85 and a 55 uh, and he pulled me over he's like what are you doing Jesus. and he's like what are you doing i'm like well um i'm not gonna lie to you i was listening to the matrix soundtrack pretending i was in the movie and the guy looked at me and he's like well first of all i appreciate you being honest second of all you're being dumb here's your ticket <laughs> Um, I love the fact that you admitted that as well. It's yeah, I, I don't know. I was young and I was nervous. I didn't know what to say. And, I, and the thing you was say, like, I am the one. Did you relax? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh man! And, uh, and, and on par with uh, with Fast and Furious. Whenever my my older man Eric and I play Call of Duty Zombies, and he's sprinting around, he always sings a really bad take on the that that one Tokyo Drift song. The one that's like. Hey, we're gonna be gonna go. He always sings that nonstop whenever he's sprinting around in zombies and zombies are chasing him. I, 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 I've watched Fast and Furious, all of them. I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't oh, know. Well, I guess who's the true fan here? I guess, I guess I'll give that to you. You can take that cap now. Yeah, although I will say I don't walk around cosplaying uh, Vin Diesel, so I, I guess I am not the true fan. <laughs> There's not many <laughs> things I can do with this face, so unfortunately that's the only I can do. Um, <laughs> Well, that that really hit me low. But no, the reason I brought up the, like the idea of the Matrix was like I remember like because you you so you're only four years older than me. So at that point, you were probably ninety nine. So that's six. Uh, you're probably eighteen at that point when that movie came out. Like yeah. that that was so ahead of its time. Like I love those movies because you would walk out and you felt like you were a part of something special. Like it's been a long time that like you've I've come out of a movie and felt that way of like the Jurassic Parks, the Matrix, and yeah. all that stuff. It definitely felt like it was like the next, you know, because we would, I think we knew going into the first film there was going to be three. Did we know that? I think no. we knew that. Did we not know that? Mm-mm. No. I, I, so, I kind of, I remember Matrix feeling like, I kind of feel like com- Matrix. I kind of feel, feel like co- coming out. Are you talking about Matrix or Jurassic Park? Yeah. No, we're talking Matrix. Yeah. And I, I remember, um, yeah, coming out of it and it felt like, oh man, this is like the new Star Wars or like the new big franchise. That's what it kind of felt like. So when the Matrix first came out, um, the company that produced it, um, I used to have a ton of Matrix stuff. I used to be a huge Matrix. I have a lot of posters. Um, I got some of the comics as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was so good. The, 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 I'm not a big anime guy, but like even the anime series, that the uh, the cartoon yeah. series, that it was amazing. Like Because it filled in the holes of like some of the movie plot lines. 
I've got that box set. I've got the DVD box mm. set. It's got all the little shorts on it. Yeah, and it was. Did you get the one with like the bust of the mate of uh, Nero in the glass? Did you did you ever see that box set? No, I didn't have that one. Oh, there's this fancy box set out. I had it at one point until I dropped it and broke it. But it was like this like plastic thing and had like Nero uh, head bust in it. And then like you'd push a button and then like for the movie and then that that movie would come out like slide out and you could put it then take it out and then you could put it back in. It was pretty clever. OK, but no, the first one came out and then the um, I think it was Sony that owned the rights to it or Columbia House, whatever it was. They didn't know they watched it and didn't know if people were going to take on to it. And at that point, Keanu Reeves, besides speed, didn't really have like he wasn't popping out hit after hit after hit so they weren't sure like is this going to be a success and actually opening weekend wasn't huge for the matrix it was word of mouth that started picking it up to make it go to get higher um and then it wasn't until 2003 that they announced that they were going to do the next matrix series and then 2004 the first one came out and then the next one came out in 2005 i believe and there is your yeah. history on the Matrix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I remember it was around um, the same time as it was around the same time as didn't Lord of the Rings come out around then as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Lord of the Rings because the weekend I'll never forget. Well, I was working in the theaters this time in college, but there was a week. There was I remember the new Terminator movie came out, then the Matrix movie came out, then Cabin in the Woods came out, then Lord of the Rings came out. And it was just like, it was, there was one summer, I think it was 2004. Spider-Man as well, the Tobey Maguire. Correct. That, the second... that film was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. like, I remember being, see, talking about Marvel films. That first Spider-Man film was well, the first, The first Spider-Man film came out in 2002. The Did sequel it? to it came out in 2004, yeah. Oh man, I don't know. It's all around that gonna, time. I can, can I call a timeout on the, timeout on the clock? Um... Luke, are you saying that you think that the Tobey Maguire Sam Raimi trilogy is the best Spider-Man? No, I'm saying that first first one was that amazing. First, that okay. first one because at the time we'd never seen Spider-Man done like that. That mm -hmm. that was right. that came out before the Nolan Batman films, and mm -hmm. then it was like, yeah. and then Batman Begins came out. I think it was like a couple of years after that, or a year after that. Um, Batman which was Be also amazing. Batman Begins came out in 2006. Oh, was it that? No, oh, okay. But I remember just that Spider-Man yes. film came up. We'd never seen Spidey like swinging through the city like that in a movie. And I remember coming out and just coming out of the cinema and just being like, that was, that was amazing. We well, also remember too, well, at that two time. Two years later, Iron Man came out. Huh? Two years later, Iron Man came out. Was it that long? No, Iron Man, Iron Man came, came out in 2008. Yeah, 2008. But that, you remember when the first Spider-Man movie came out, the only thing that was holding in any retrospective similarity to it was the X-Men movies. So you're talking yeah. about you had X-Men yeah. movies and Spider-Man. That was really it. You were just you. The only thing that was close to that in in time frame was the 99 was the 97 Batman Forever, right? Which left a bad taste yeah. in people's mouths because they yeah. the Batman movies unfortunately just kept falling off uh, falling off a cliff. They just they you know you had Batman and Robin, then you had Batman Forever. They just weren't keeping up with they just were they were turning into gags of themselves so then you come into the early yeah. 2000s with the x-men movies which i you know i still i still enjoy watching them they're not the best things in the world but oh, i do I enjoy them x-men trilogy yeah yeah, hugh, yeah yeah hugh jackman as wolverine and i love how he was kind of part of so many different movies was amazing and then the spider-man movie with toby mcguire was excellent because you know, I think a lot of people that were in their, you know, mid-teens, even early adulthood were so used to these these flops of Batman movies yeah. that they didn't know what to expect with Spider-Man. And then Spider-Man comes out and you're like, it was it was done really well. It was done really well. And Spidey was always my favorite as a kid as well. Like he was he was always my favorite character. Um but yeah, I really enjoyed that first Spider-Man film. And then obviously the Batman film as well. That came out of nowhere. As well, Batman mm. Begins. I remember there was like no in the UK anyway. There was no hype around it that I knew of. No, not yeah. here either. And it just came and it just well, came out, and I was like just blown away by that as well. And it kind of felt like they sort of set that foundation for this next generation of of uh, of sort of superhero films. Superhero films. I don't yeah. think that what the Marvel guys... movies wouldn't. Been, I don't think Marvel would have been as successful if not for Batman Begins. Yes. Yeah. What do you guys fact, think Batman the, Begins is my the favorite remake. of the Batman films. Pardon. What do you guys think of the remake of the X Men franchise with the younger folks? Of the X Men, yeah, uh, I've not watched any of them. 
I've like watched... the Days of Future Past, X Men Apocalypse, all that stuff. Yeah, they were okay. They're all right. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not watching them now. I d- you know, but here's the thing. Like I, you know, it's kind of like you know what I did on Friday with the with the the music. Like I've recently gone into movies and just watched them without like like in the last couple of years without like over like hyping them because I feel like when I overhype a movie, like I'm setting it to a standard that it's just never going to be met. So like now I go into movies just openly and like, hey, I'm just going to enjoy it for what it was because some some of the Marvel or even the DC or even like the X Men like some of them just I had so much hype in them that it just didn't meet my expectations. Um, you know, like for instance, a lot of people hated the New Mutants movie. Like I went into that with so low expectations that I really enjoyed it. Anya Taylor Joy was one of the highlights of that movie, and in, in in my humble superhero movie opinion, mm, I enjoyed it. Just her performance, in my opinion, was one of the biggest highlights of that entire movie. Luke, have you seen it? No. Honestly, there's so many like no. new films that I just need to like watch. <laughs> just just go on a binger. I, on I, I need to go on a binge. I do need to go on a binge with like some of the Marvel films as well and kind of just play catch yeah. up. Because uh, I've watched new some movies, of the like the newer on ones. Max, so. Okay. Well, if, I don't obviously I don't get HBO over yeah. here. So uh, I will uh, Luke, Atlantic is what we have over here. Luke, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to send you a link in the next couple of days. Yeah, on, please do that. Yeah. On, on how to get around that and watch HBO Max. Oh, okay. I will I will teach you yeah, the way. This ways. show is actually uh this show is actually actually yeah, let's talk about our sponsor. Um <clears throat> um this show is sponsored by NordVPN. <laughs> NordVPN. Watch anything anywhere, especially if you're in the UK and you want to watch uh, HBO Max. It's the only way around it. NordVPN. Thank you. Oh, right. I do. I, I just paid before, my rent. So, there you go. anyways, well, hold on. Before before you do the sponsoring, I do have a funny sponsor story, real quick. Before, because I don't want the show going too long, but I think you guys will get a kick out of this. We have. I have a show called Let's Talk Vinyl. It comes. It is the next episode on Tuesday, where we, uh, one of uh, my friends over on the West Coast, who's a winemaker uh, in a very famous winery, we talk about a Pearl Jam song, open a bottle of wine, we do all this fun stuff, whatever. Um, jokingly, two months ago, we had talked about he, he was getting married, and I said, "Oh, this show is sponsored by AdamandEve.com," and we gave this fake promo code out and everything. Well, the promo code was used thirty-one times, and um, they had reached back out to me. And they finally, because I guess they finally found out where it came from because they had emailed these people using the code saying it doesn't work. Um, and they said, you know, we appreciate the fact that you're trying to use our, uh, use our services. But um, they gave me basically a cease and desist and said, if I really want to use our code, I have to follow these pathways. But yeah, I got in trouble for fakenly um, offering people a fake code for adamandeve.com. <laughs> um, disclaimer, we're not actually sponsored by NordVPN. All right, sorry. Uh, that's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just wanted to get to get that out there. Um, but yeah, no, I uh, yeah, I recently I've been getting really excited because Marvel in the MCU they are planning on bringing in mutants for the first time in the entire history of the MCU, being that they just got the rights from Fox to use the word mutant because they have like not been able to for the last however many years because Fox has owned the rights literally to calling superheroes mutants That's within crazy. cinematic franchises. Amazing. So it's really exciting. And it's the same thing with, um, oh, yeah, and that's the same thing with, like, the TV shows with, and I know, like, granted, within the, the Marvel Universe, Inhumans are an actual thing, but, like, it's just crazy because in all the TV shows, they couldn't say mutants either. They had to say Inhumans nonstop, even if they weren't involved in the Inhumans. Mm. Well, that's that's licensing and for so you. so it's just all bureaucratic politics and stuff. Which that's like my, I got to tell you though, the last couple times that I've went out drinking with friends and just like talking to random people, I think at least three times a night, I've told the story about why there's so many different disputes with like licensing and names and stuff like that. And I got, I don't know why, but I'm enjoying it so much. Like whenever anyone's, we're playing, because uh, one of my favorite bars that I go to in the area is called Updown and it's an arcade bar. And anyone that follows me on Instagram sees that at least like every other weekend or every weekend I post that I'm at Updown. And it's rad because they have all of the original X-Men side-scrolling games and all the original Avengers uh, Avenger side-scrolling games. They have the original Time Crisis, and it's like a full working two-player console. Um, like they have the original Sunset Drive game. That's the two-player driving simulator and everything. And it's it's that place is great because everyone just gets super drunk and just plays video games with strangers because all these games, like the big... You know what I'm talking about with the big X-Men one, right? Where there's like four sets of yeah. like a, a controller and like the two buttons and everything and you put the coin in for whoever you want to be with like storm cyclops or rogue or wolverine 
And it's great because people just get drunk and just hop on the game. If there's an open player slot with random people and nine times out of 10 people are playing and they're like, wow, I wonder why they're not in the MCU. And then I hear that and my drunk ass just leans over and goes, do you want to know why? And then I just get into the story with complete strangers at least two or three times a night. And it's one of my favorite, it's literally one of my favorite parts of the night, whenever it happens, just because nobody knows it and they think it's ridiculous. So, well, so Luke, go, getting onto a topic about you, because I feel like we've talked a lot about me and Bailey on this episode and we're being very, s- very selfish. We're selfish little boys. Yeah. So nah. Don't whoa, 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 hang on, run it back. We're gonna we're gonna edit that out for the the final stream, and uh, we're not gonna say selfish little boys. Um, we are selfish little men, okay? For for the track to be able to have that on Spotify when the final episode goes up there. But yeah, Anthony, continue. I will not be editing that, by the way. So as you know, <laughs> we know that you've done a lot of work with Metallic. You've done a lot of great stuff with video games. Um, now that I've just purchased it, um, what else? You know, what else? have you been working on or have worked on recently that's dropped that we can talk about? Um, and where can people find your work or purchase some things that you have going on? Um, what have I worked on recently that's just dropped or what am I working on that's coming up? No, well, I know you can't talk about too much. So whatever you can talk no. about. I've got a, uh, um, actually, I've actually finally worked, started working on a new gig poster as well. Cause obviously gigs are coming back again. Mm-hmm. So that's nice. I can't tell you what that is, but that's good. Um, I don't know whether you noticed, uh, it was shared on my Instagram recently, the Gears, Gears of War soundtrack on vinyl is uh, the original trilogy. Yeah. You know, that's just been announced. Um, so I work with Xbox on that, and that's coming out through Lace Records. Um, and there's just a, there's a bunch of other stuff. I did some, I've done some work for Hasbro as well recently, which should, I think that's coming out next year. So oh, that's, that's a bit, that, that's a bit different as well. That's like, that's, that's, that's going to be fun. Like, I think going like going into like this, like the end of this year and going into next year, I want to try and do some more of my own stuff. That's something I've been wanting to do for a while, but I just never find time or never make time to do it. Um, and with regards to me, just lukepriest.com. And then from there, you'll find all my social links and whatnot from there. All right, sweet. Well, that's cool. I mean, definitely check them out to support the artists. We're always about that here. Um, you know, at the touring fan live and X, uh, X gets a square, which I still have no idea why the hell I named that show that, but it is clever and it's just sticking. Um, but no, yeah, support the artists. Definitely check them out. Terrifyingly named. There you go. Luke Pierce um, is also on Instagram. Definitely check him out there. You can also check out his website to purchase his stuff, help him out. He just, you've heard he's got kids to feed. He has a new house to uh, pay off. Um, yeah, can, can, he's got PS5 yeah. to buy. He has a PS5 to buy. Um, and I then, he, and then he also needs to purchase the um, Food Fighters poster that recently came out on Gallery 88. So, and if I, you uh, if you look on the link below, there's actually a GoFundMe for Luke's PS5 that I made while we've been doing this show. <laughs> uh, so we can crowdfund this guy's uh, crowdfund his PS5. Amazing. So he can buy furniture for his kids. <laughs> Actually, no, we have to make it a little bit more sympathetic. There's a crowdfund for his PS5 so that way he can buy Campbell's soup for his kids. There that's right. That's right. His kids, are sleeping on, his kids are sleeping on pizza boxes right now um, yeah. in the bedroom. They, they have no shoes. No shoes. They have no one shoes. shoe each. They split them. Yeah, They're the same size. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. His kids, it's kids. horrible. His kids are sleeping on pizza boxes and they have pizza boxes taped to their feet. It's you would think all the money that they're spending on pizza, maybe they could allocate it to actual furniture and shoes. But no. <laughs> oh my god! All right, Luke. Is there anything else you want to, that you uh, you have on your mind? Anything else that needs to be said into this world? Is there anything else that's imp- as important as this photo of a guy wearing Jenko jeans um, that you need to make sure that we speak about today? I mean, nothing could be as important as that man wearing those jeans. I mean, look at them. Oh boy. Do you just yeah, have this picture? Look at the pockets. Do you just to flash up when you want to? It looks like someone's got the smudge tool in Photoshop and just kind of gone like this. Wait, you know what? You know what? <laughs> those pants. Those are the true poster collector pants because I bet you can fit tubes in those back pockets. I bet you can get an 18 by 24 in those back pockets right there. Yeah, yeah, you can. See, Anthony is, Anthony's having a little bit of an epiphany right now. <laughs> oh. oh. I am going the, <laughs> the next Pearl Jam show I go to to be like, why are you wearing those pants? Because I don't have to carry merch anymore. They're yeah. in my pants. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. You heard of parachute pants? Now cargo container pants. Come god, my wa- I'm, I would be you. 
almost certain my wife would leave me if I wore those in the house. <laughs> she, she, I would be gonzo. Well, listen, Luke, first yeah, of all... You wouldn't have to carry poster tubes anymore. Yeah, I'm okay. I, I, I Actually, I have my, I have my poster tube um, that I take to shows is actually very expensive and very fancy that I take to conventions or... Well, I have one for conventions and one for concerts, um, but it, I paid a lot of money for it, So and it has, like... Basically, backpack straps and everything on it. Nice. Yeah, I take my i yeah my art collection is very serious, and actually, I just got probably it's so funny because. Go ahead. I was gonna say it's so funny because I don't think I've met a single poster artist that has like a super expensive poster carrying tube. No, and it's it's just it's so funny that there's that like weird crossover where none of us have the tubes but then anybody that like buys the posters yeah. all have the expensive tubes well, you have to look at it differently too because you as the artist per se right like you're making the art and putting it out into mm-hmm. the world we as the collector we look at it differently because it's it's something that's valuable to us like it's something that is like we're investing into because we know that it's like something that is is you know some people collect cars some, like this is the thing like so you know like i just recently got the most expensive piece of art I've owned. Um, and like the whole process of unrolling it with white gloves and leveling it off. And it's, I mean, there's a lot to it, but it's just the fact that like, I know that there is like, you know, like I don't want it to be ruined. So yeah. So like when I go to a, you know, a concert, like that's where 90, Mm. 80% of my, my collection is this concert gig work. Um, yeah, there's a reason I'm getting that. It's because it's going to be a memory from that show. Like, yeah, it's like, I want to make sure it's, not going to get crushed on a plane or, you know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it, they, they Was are that one of your grails. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What is it? You can't leave us, uh, you can't leave us without <laughs> any insight. Um, I got the Tyler Stout. It is the one own of one Reservoir Dogs print, but it's the gold edition. Um, it, it it was it would I only wanted I was just really trying to get the original version because that's really what all I could afford because that was you know six hundred bucks by itself but um, someone messaged me and said hey I have this um, one off and I didn't know if it was real or not so I actually messaged Tyler himself and he said I don't yeah he goes yeah that's that's real and uh, yeah I it was uh, it was it was interesting for sure and, but I got that and that was like um, yeah it's still in the flattening process before it goes off to get custom framed. Luke, do you have any grails that you've been trying to track down in terms of art or skate decks or anything? Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, not really. I mean, I, 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 um, I did have a, um, I have one thing that I kind of wished that I had, like my, I had a, an original, when I was a kid, I had an original uh, SMA Rocco 3 skateboard. And um, it just got like basically ruined growing up. And I'd kind of like to purchase that again, mm. if I could get it and just hang it in here, just to have it as like a, a bit of a momentum. Hmm. Um, Are you excited like, about the, sorry, continue. Um, but apart from that, not really. I mean, I'll be, it sounds mad to, like, I don't buy like a lot of, I don't buy like a lot of art and stuff really. I kind of, yeah, I, I, do I, I, I do pick up some stuff, but um, I wouldn't consider myself to be like a, a avid like collector of things, even though I have. Are a, you like, excited about skateboarding being in the Olympics? Yes, I am. Yeah. Very cool. Are you going to watch them whenever they're, uh, they're streaming? Oh, I'm totally watching that. Yeah. That's what, yeah. in four years, right? Huh? No, it's now. It's, it's now. now? It's now. Yeah. It's it's happening this year, yeah. It's the first year that skateboarding's in the Summer Games. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's got. Uh, is, isn't Tony Hawk doing like the commentating? Yeah, actually, one of my friends that's in the poster world, his buddy met Tony Hawk out in Tokyo. Oh, amazing. Hmm. Yeah, because he was out there doing something, but yeah. That's, yeah, that's... that should be good. Yeah, this and they've got like. Have um... you seen the photos of the park? Yeah, I've seen. I've been watching the uh, the Instagram videos of Tony Hawk, like skating on the park, just trying it out. And yeah. Stuff. And Anthony, just to give you a little bit of insight into this, they designed the street park to be completely symmetrical. So nobody had any advantage as to what part of the park they were in. Oh, right. Okay. So it's made that. so that, yeah, yeah. So it's made to be completely like as symmetrical 
and fair as possible so that way like you know like back when the do tour was like a huge thing they had the park but the features were not symmetrical and so if someone was say better at doing stair sets or doing some sort of a different grind they kind of stuck to one park and they were able to score higher because they were you know more adept at those areas but they designed the tokyo game summer park for the street section to be completely symmetrical so that way there were no advantages as to if someone was on one side of the park versus someone being on another side Wow, could you imagine? First of all, the U.S. has to win this. Like, I, I mean, it, I mean, this is, I mean, this is as almost as American as baseball. If you think about it, how it was created in America. Um, but in, in my opinion, no, no offense, Luke. Um, That's fine. But, but, <laughs> they can. but no, no, I'm just. But it's interesting. But it's like, could you imagine being like Tony Hawk, who like grew up in in an era of like almost unacceptance. And like watching this grow from absolutely nothing to a video game franchise to being almost accepted everywhere to now being in the Olympics. I mean, that's got it. I mean, that man's seen the growth from basically nothing to Olympic level. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's amazing. Mm. It is heartbreaking, though, because Tony Hawk has been posting on his Instagram his last time doing certain tricks. And it's just like you can see he like breaks down crying after he finishes the trick because he's just getting too old to do these tricks anymore. And so he's doing like a, a, a historical tour of Tony Hawk. And mm. so he's doing like his last 540 or his last certain type of grind or last something or other. And the 540 video in particular, you know, he, he tried to nail it time and time again on the video. And then when he finally gets it, like he, he nails it and then drops off of his board and onto his knees and slides down the half pipe on his knees and just breaks down crying. Because he knows that, like, that was the last time that he was ever going to be able to successfully do it, being that he's getting older. I'd, I'd highly recommend um, watching some of the, the the Tony Hawk documentaries on Amazon. They're really good. I'll there's have like to watch there's, there's, there's a couple on there, and that, yeah, it's got like all the different skaters on there, and like like Rodney Mullins on there. Like he's like really a really interesting guy, and uh, hmm. yeah, I'd, I'd recommend watching that if you like a good documentary. They're really good. They're good. Like it's a, they're good like yes. underdog, underdog stories, you know. Mm. Well, Have you guys seen Lords of Dogtown? Uh, yes, I think a I long have. time ago. Classic, I went, like I went 2000 to the, skate movie. We went to Santa Monica a couple of years ago, and me and my wife went to the coffee shop, which was which mm. we used to be where it's called Dogtown Coffee now. I think it is. Yeah, Dog, yeah, we went there, and that was really cool. Going there. Well, um, skate culture has, like Anthony said, evolved so much over the yeah, last, like you know, how crazy. many years. Oh, I can't skateboard anymore. I'm terrible. I can't I skate to, at all. I, I tried to, once and gave myself a concussion. Yeah, so. I, I, <laughs> I used to skateboard a lot when I was younger. Obviously, I loved it, but um, I was never amazing or anything. But I just just, just loved the whole thing, the music, the skating, the people. I just loved the whole thing, um, the art, obviously, and mm. uh, just the culture of it. Yeah, it's all just a bit punk rock, and I kind of that's, I just enjoyed it. Yeah, Anthony, you okay there, buddy? Yeah, no, I would just it, it, the the something came up on the screen I've never saw before. It was interesting. Mm. It's all good. Everything's good. But listen, we're at that time. We are yes. we are we're going into the longest interview we've ever done. Probably the most random episode we've ever done. Um, and uh, Luke, I apologize about that, but I thank you so much for your time. And you know, going through your artwork over the last couple of days and really getting to learn about you online. Um, I am beyond, and I mean, listen, I know you hear this all the time, but absolutely impressed in, in your, um, the amount of work you're doing, but also in the different areas that you're, you're doing it in and the way that you're able to, um, cross into different platforms is, is absolutely amazing. Um, so I look forward to seeing what you do in the future, whether that is a Jurassic park poster or not. We'll just have to, time will tell. Um, but Check him out online. Go on Instagram. You can check out Luke up there. You can go to his website. Um, we'll have more information on the link here. If you just tuned into this episode and missed the beginning of the episode, um, you can check out this episode on our podcast version that will be dropping on Monday on or everywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts, whether it's on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, Google, Deezer. It's, they're all there. Otherwise, you can check us out on our YouTube channel. And all of the previous episodes of X Gets a Square is up on its own YouTube uh, branch, up on its own channel on the YouTube itself. So you can definitely check that out um remember like subscribe all that fun stuff uh keep supporting um and then go from there um bailey anything else you want to say before we end this uh wrap this up yeah just thanks for coming on luke you know uh i 
the only time that you and I ever really get to talk is when it's two or three in the morning here yeah. because that's when you're having your coffee in the morning out yeah. there. Um, and I'm like half the time half asleep during those conversations. So I was glad that uh, we were able to find a time where we were able to talk and both yeah, it's great. Really cognitive and functioning. So it was cool. Yes. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. It was really cool to talk. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for both for having me. It's been great. I well, love, you know, just having a good chat about nerdy stuff. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, just this that's what the show is shooting the shit about pop culture and just talking. So. Yeah, and that's how X gets the square. Ooh, that is a clever way. <laughs> Don't no 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 to no, end no, the not show. Out of that. that is right. So <laughs> no. thank you for tuning in. For more information about this show and all of our shows, go to www.thetouringfanlive. And that is how X gets you say it, the you square. Say it, you say it.